uh, today's my presentation includes uh, basically five topics okay uh, first is irrigation scheduling so in short uh, what is irrigation scheduling okay and in irrigation scheduling there are three components okay one is uh, how to irrigate when to irrigate and how much to irrigate so out of which uh, i have already dealt with how to irrigate in uh, previous uh, training lecture and in this case I, I, I will be briefly telling you about how much to irrigate and its terminologies and concept similarly on when to irrigate its terminologies and concepts then what are the current practices of irrigation scheduling and then I will focus on real-time irrigation scheduling for drip irrigation its importance concept and the different mobile and web-based applications for real-time estimation of reference crop you have for transpiration and at the same time mobile and web-based applications for real-time irrigation scheduling so in short what you are going to learn in this particular training lecture is that in short what is irrigation scheduling because i know that the previous uh, training sessions already covered in detail about the irrigation schedulings but still i will uh, provide you some overview about the irrigation scheduling uh, then uh, the two components of irrigation scheduling uh, how much to irrigate and when to irrigate uh, the different terminologies and concepts required for this purpose uh, what are the current practices of irrigation scheduling and then the main topic the real-time irrigation scheduling what is the importance of uh, real-time irrigation scheduling compared to the current practices of irrigation scheduling and uh, what are the different tools uh, for performing the irrigation scheduling so that uh, 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 that we'll see uh, towards the end of uh, our this lecture then let us see about the irrigation scheduling uh, as I already emphasized in my previous training lecture that uh, irrigation scheduling consists of three questions if we answer these three questions then we are done with the irrigation scheduling that is how much how 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 to irrigate is first when to irrigate is second how much to irrigate is third uh, whenever we need to provide the irrigation to any crop okay so we grow that crop in particular soil okay at particular location and we irrigate that crop by using particular irrigation method okay so how to irrigate means the method to be used for irrigation and then adopting that method for irrigation is how to irrigate say for example there are three methods of irrigation predominantly used surface irrigation method sprinkler irrigation method and drip irrigation method okay so using one of these irrigation method okay for irrigating our field is how to irrigate okay but it is not just using any irrigation method but adopting that irrigation method appropriately for the crop to be irrigated is how to irrigate then when to irrigate okay so our crop is having certain crop growth period say it is 120 days 150 days 365 days okay so during that crop growth period okay uh, when should i irrigate actually okay so whether i should irrigate every week every day two times in a day every month okay so deciding that is when to irrigate that is the irrigation frequency okay it, it is deciding means it is not just on a certain consideration but on the scientific basis actually okay so we have to irrigate the field whenever the crop needs irrigation okay so deciding the frequency of the irrigation or when to uh, uh, irrigate uh, is, is the answer of that then how much to irrigate so once we decide the frequency of, of irrigation or uh, when to irrigate then every time when we irrigate uh, what is the amount of water to be provided to the field to the crop is how much to irrigate so three questions how to irrigate when to irrigate and how much to irrigate okay so i have uh, uh, also displayed this on the screen say uh, how is the way of application that is whether you are going to use surface subsurface it's not predominantly used sprinkler micro okay uh, in surface again there are border ridges and furrows and check basin in sprinkler 
mini sprinkler, conventional, rain gun, central pivot, and in micro drip irrigation, micro sprinkler irrigation, bubbler irrigation, subsurface drip. So we are here uh, dealing with the micro irrigation method, and drip irrigation is uh, mostly used method under micro irrigation method. And the second question is when? When is the interval between two applications or two irrigations or frequency of irrigation or application? So this is deciding uh, uh, the days of the irrigation or the dates of the irrigation is when to irrigate and how much is the total depth or volume of water to be applied for every irrigation. Now let us see irrigation scheduling, how much to irrigate, what are the different terminologies and concepts uh, uh, related to this. Here you see now when and how much to irrigate in drip irrigation uh, and out of which uh, we are going to see here how much to irrigate in drip irrigation and after this we are going to see when to irrigate. Now when we say that how much to irrigate means what is the amount of water to be applied to the crop. Okay, it is not just arbitrarily that to apply 5 centimeter of water, 2 centimeter of water, 4 liters of water, it is not like that. Okay, so as we need water, as we ourselves have certain water requirement based on certain consideration, the crop also need water based on certain consideration. Okay, it's not just like that uh, any amount of the water we can provide to the crop. Okay, but uh, it's not like that. Crop needs to be provided with water as per their requirement. And the requirement depends on three major components. One is weather. Okay. Crop water requirement varies as per the weather conditions. Okay. And uh, these weather parameters that influence the water to be applied to the crop are temperature, humidity, wind speed, sunshine hours and rainfall okay so these parameters govern the water requirement because as you see here we 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 grow <coughs> uh, the plant in soil okay and uh, whenever we apply water to the plant then we have to apply water to the plant in soil okay so some of the water will be evaporated okay and and some of the water will be taken by the plant and eventually for its growth it will be transpired. Both the process evaporation and transpiration they are governed by the energy source okay and uh, and the parameters which are responsible for this are temperature, humidity, wind speed, sunshine hours and rainfall okay. Uh, then plant water requirement uh, depends on plant itself actually. Okay, because all, all kinds of the plant will not have the same water requirement like all kind of the human being. Uh, they don't have the same kind of the water requirement. Uh, so similarly, uh, plant uh, uh, type and its growth stage as well. Okay, so for example, if the plant is uh, say sugarcane and say cotton, so both will have the different water requirement. Uh, if you take uh, the plant as sugarcane okay so it will have the different water requirement in the beginning and it will have the different water requirement in the middle of the season or towards the end okay so this means that the water requirement varies as per the plant type and at the same time uh, 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 its age or its growth stage as well okay and this will also vary specially means from location to location so if you are growing sugarcane uh, say in Brazil and if you are growing sugarcane in India okay so its water requirement will vary because the weather parameters that govern the evaporation process temperature process okay they also vary okay and third is soil of course okay uh, soil you may wonder why soil uh, influence the water requirement okay but there is a reason that when we apply the water to the crop Okay, so we, we, we don't give water to the crop directly. Okay, so we have to store water and we store that water in the soil root zone. Okay, so as we have to store water in the soil root zone and as plant has to take the water as per its requirement from the soil root zone, the 
soil parameters also influence and the parameters influencing the water requirement concerned with the soil are field capacity, wilting point and bulk density. These are basically the storage, water storage parameters of the soil. You can consider those as water storage parameter of the soil. Okay. So those parameters also influence the water requirement. Okay. So in short, uh, how much to irrigate that is how much water I should apply to the plant for its proper growth okay depends on three major components one is weather plant and third is soil out of which these weather parameters they varies with respect to time with respect to location okay plant also varies with respect to time and with respect to location soil parameters though they may not vary with respect to time greatly but varies with respect to location so you see that when we apply water okay it is not just arbitrarily but it depends on many many things and when farmer has to apply water efficiently and precisely farmer need to consider all these parameters okay and when farmer needs to consider all these parameters how farmer will consider those because there are many other uh, properties characteristics associated with all these parameters so for that and for the precise computation of the water to be applied uh, we need to provide certain tool to the farmers and in this case later in my training lecture uh, i'm going to also describe the tools which will be helpful for the farmers to apply water precisely and efficiently many a times uh, we say that water requirement, irrigation water requirement, evapotranspiration. So what are exactly these actually? Because we are going to determine the water requirement in terms of uh, some quantitative terms. So we must know uh, what are the different components that constitute to the water requirement, how it is calculated, how it is influenced. Uh, so for that, first we need to see the different terminologies. We need to study the different terminologies related to irrigation water requirement. Uh, I, I know that many of these terminologies have already been covered and I think you are already learned those terminologies but still uh, just for the purpose of continuity uh, I would like to repeat those. Uh, let us see the first one uh, which is transpiration. Okay? Uh, as shown on the screen transpiration is a process by which water is lost in the form of vapor through plant leaves. Actually this is the main requirement of the plant for uh, water actually. So we call this as the transpiration. Okay. So as you see from the accompanied figure, uh, the transpiration is required or this process is required for the plant to uh, prepare the food actually. So by means of which uh, plant root extracts the water from the soil root zone and then transpire some of the water which is left uh, after uh, satisfying all the metabolic activities to the atmosphere and this transpiration depends on the weather parameters such as temperature, humidity, sunshine hours, wind speed and at the same time rainfall. Okay? So transpiration is the major component of the water requirement of the plant that needs to be satisfied actually. So transpiration is a process by which water is lost in the form of vapor uh, through plant leaves. Then the second is evaporation. Okay. So as it is defined here on the screen, as you read from the screen, evaporation is a process by which water is lost in the form of vapor from natural surface such as free water surface, bare soil, leaves, dead vegetation, etc. So basically what is evaporation now as far as the water requirement is concerned? Evaporation is the process by which water is lost from the soil surface Okay, uh, to the atmosphere. So why we need to consider? One thing is uh, we, we should notice that. Okay, so we have to apply water to satisfy the plant water needs, uh, which is mainly transpiration. But we cannot apply water directly into the stem, into the root. Okay, and we have to apply water uh, to the certain media from which plant can take that water, and that media is soil actually. So we have to apply water into the soil okay and then plant root will take water from the soil okay and then they will use it for the process of its metabolic activities and transpiration but basically we have to apply water into the soil root zone and when we apply water into the soil root zone 
some of the water from the soil root zone will be evaporated and the quantity of the water which is uh, governed uh, uh, or which is evaporated is governed by the again the weather parameters such as temperature, humidity, sunshine hours, wind and rainfall actually. Okay. So, in short if we summarize this, transpiration is a process which is required okay, for the growth of the plant and this is the amount of the water which is lost in the form of vapor through the plant leaves and again it is governed by the weather parameters. Evaporation is the process by which the water is lost from the soil surface into the atmosphere and again this is governed by the weather parameters. Uh, and why evaporation we have to consider because the plant cannot take water directly so we have to apply water into the certain media and that media is soil and plant roots will take water from the soil root zone and uh, then it is used for the process of the transpiration. And as we are going to apply water into the soil root zone, some of the water will also be evaporated directly. So we need to consider that water as well. Okay. So as you might have understood by now that basically the water requirement of the plant is transpiration. But as we have to apply water into the soil root zone, uh, we have to consider the water lost in the process of evaporation. So together we call it as the evapotranspiration. So evapotranspiration is a combined loss of water from soil and plant surface to the atmosphere through vaporization of the liquid water. Okay. So I have shown this all this process diagrammatically as well. So ET evapotranspiration is the sum of evaporation and transpiration. So and one thing at this point uh, uh, let me tell you that evapotranspiration is the major component of the water requirement as you will see in the process of our discussion. I hope this Transpiration, evaporation and evapotranspiration is clear. Now, reference crop evapotranspiration because uh, many a times uh, you might have heard this word or maybe this has already been covered by the previous lecturers but uh, uh, in irrigation scheduling we offer refer to the term reference crop evapotranspiration are reference city. What is exactly this? Okay. So by definition, first we'll read its definition actually. The reference crop evapotranspiration or reference ET is the evapotranspiration. Now by now you know what is evapotranspiration. It is evaporation plus transpiration. So reference crop ET is the evapotranspiration from the reference crop which is hypothetical grass with an assumed crop height of 0.12 meter, a fixed surface resistance of 17 second per meters and an albedo of 0.23. The reference crop closely resembles an extensive surface of green, well watered grass and uniform height, actually growing and completely shedding the ground and never short of water. Okay. So I repeat this again, the reference crop evapotranspiration transpiration is the evapotranspiration from the reference crop which is hypothetical grass with an assumed crop height of 0.12 meter a fixed surface resistance of 17 70 sorry uh, second per meter and an albedo of 0.23 the reference crop closely resembles an extensive surface of green well watered grass of uniform height actually growing and completely shedding the ground and never short of water this in short the reference crop evapotranspiration is the evapotranspiration of some hypothetical surface in fact which is a grass actually uh, which is always well watered never short of water uniform height actually growing and completely shedding the ground okay and why uh, first thing is that why we need to define such kind of the thing actually okay the reason is that the there are several kinds of the crops uh, exist in the world and if we want to calculate the evapotranspiration of the crop uh, uh, in the different parts of the region, then it is very difficult to estimate that. And for that, what we do, we estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration uh, with the help of uh, certain experimental uh, setup or with the help of certain formulae. And then we relate this reference crop evapotranspiration to the uh, evapotranspiration of the crop. So for that, we first need to estimate this uh, reference crop evapotranspiration 
and basically as shown in the bottom figure uh, reference crop you have to transplantation consider the weather parameters and the crop which is the reference crop that is grass okay and in fact this is the water need of the uh, reference crop okay so in fact we can say that this is the evapotranspiration of the reference crop that is evaporation and transpiration of the reference crop and as we consider the crop is the constant the reference one the evapotranspiration is totally governed by the climatic parameters uh, i have listed all those that is temperature humidity sunshine hours wind speed and so on okay and there are several methods of the measurement of the reference crop evapotranspiration and estimation as well measurement uh, methods include the lysimetric method field water balance method and so on uh, however uh, the measurement methods they are used for deriving certain formulae for the estimation okay uh, and the estimation formulae they are penman monteith hargreaves samani modified penman jensen hayes blaney criddle thornthwaite radiation FAO pan method and many others virtually there are in the literature more than 100 formulae for the estimation of the reference crop evapotranspiration but one thing you must consider that this reference crop evapotranspiration formulae they can be used to easily estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration with the help of the climatological data the measurement of the reference crop evapotranspiration is difficult and that is only to be used to derive certain formulae now I, I have listed here just two method one is the simplest method which is uh, uh, on the right hand side of this uh, screen fao pan method okay so this is one of the methods for estimation of the reference crop evapotranspiration and on the left side penman monteith method uh, this is also uh, uh, considered as the most accurate method for estimating the reference crop evapotranspiration first i will explain fao pan method means uh, then you will understand uh the philosophy behind the reference crop evapotranspiration uh in fao pan method uh, what is done uh, one pan is taken uh, which is having uh, the uniform height of 30 cm and also the diameter of 1.2 m or 120 cm okay and uh, this pan is uh, colored with the white paint from inside and outside and from the bottom as well and uh, for the purpose of measurement we fill water Uh, into this pan uh, up to a certain height uh, say today at 8 am then what we do uh, we measure uh, the height of the water in the pan tomorrow after 24 hours okay so suppose i have filled water up to the pointer and tomorrow i measure the water and I, if i see that uh, the uh, water height is reduced by 10 mm so this means that 10 mm of the water is evaporated from the pan okay so this is the water which is evaporated from the pan okay however pan uh, is of the metallic uh, substance and at the same time water is continuous in the pan okay so we call this as the pan evaporation then pan evaporation is converted into the evapotranspiration from the soil surface having reference crop so for that what is done uh, Uh, the pan evaporation is multiplied by the coefficient which, which is called as the pan coefficient and this pan coefficient ranges in the uh, values from 0.7 to 0.8 say for example 10 mm is the water lost from the pan evaporation in 24 hours so this means that the pan evaporation is 10 mm and uh, and the pan coefficient for that particular region is say 0.8 then etp is 10 into 0.8 that is 10 into 0.8 is 8 so reference crop evapotranspiration is 8 mm okay so this means that we can first, we need to measure the evaporation from the pan and that evaporation can be converted into the uh, evapotranspiration of the reference crop that is the transpiration plus evaporation from the soil surface for the reference crop so in this way the, uh, the, this is the simplest method for estimating the reference crop evapotranspiration and uh, it is also considered that uh, the pan evaporation takes care of 
uh, all the parameters together that is the it is the integrated uh, uh, efforts for the evaporation uh, it, it also takes into care about the temperature humidity sunshine hours and wind speed all those things so therefore it is also considered that this method is also accurate but at the same time uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, errors and uncertainties that are involved in the pan evaporation so therefore other methods they are also derived and out of which the penman monte is the uh, uh, most accurate method but in case of the penman monte method we need the measurements of the wind speed then solar radiation then the temperature which is maximum and minimum then humidity which is maximum and minimum and then uh, this has to be obtained either from this automatic weather station which is shown here or ground meteorological observatory uh, we have to obtain these readings and then we have to put these readings in the formula and then estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration actually. Okay, so however, penman monte method takes care of uh, the entire aerodynamic resistance and also solar radiation and all the parameters and characteristics that influence the evapotranspiration process of the reference crop. So therefore, it is considered as the most accurate one. But whereas in case of the pan method, we measure the evaporation from the pan and then we convert that into evapotranspiration from the reference crop through factor uh, which may vary from region to region but normally it is 0.7 to 0.8 though this is the simplest method but uh, then again uh, uh, there are a lot of uncertainties involved in that but whereas in case of the penman monte method we can measure uh, the weather parameters that influence the evapotranspiration of the reference crop for a specified region and then put that into formulae uh, which is fairly standardized uh, uh, all over the world and then estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration. Then next is the evapotranspiration of a specified crop which is it, it is called as the ETC. Now in last slide we have seen the evapotranspiration of the reference crop which is called as the ETR. Okay, so in fact, in the irrigation scheduling, we are not interested in the evapotranspiration of the reference crop, but we are interested in the evapotranspiration of the specified crop. But to estimate the evapotranspiration of the specified crop, we must know the evapotranspiration of the reference crop, and for that, we can use the several equations, several formulae, several model, two of which we already described. Okay, now evapotranspiration of a specified crop depends on the reference crop evapotranspiration and crop characteristics that govern the evapotranspiration and this crop uh, characteristic is known as the crop coefficient. Basically ETC that is the evapotranspiration of the specified crop is the evaporation from the soil and transpiration of that specified crop. Okay. So we can measure with the help of lysimeters and field water balance studies but all the time we cannot measure it actually. Okay. So therefore we have to relate it to the reference crop evapotranspiration and some crop characteristics which is known as the crop coefficient. So normally what is done the reference crop evapotranspiration uh, is estimated and then uh, the crop evapotranspiration is, is computed by relating this ETR uh, through the crop coefficient. But for that we must know the crop coefficient. Okay. Uh, in fact the crop coefficient is again the ratio of the evapotranspiration of the crop to the reference crop evapotranspiration and this is to be determined experimentally by field water balance method and or lysimetric method. Normally what is done, uh, first the crop coefficient is determined experimentally for a specified region and for a specified crop. So for that what is done, the specified crop is grown in the lysimeter, water balance studies uh, uh, are conducted and at the end of the water balance studies uh, we can measure the evapotranspiration of that specified crop so means basically when we grow the specified crop into the lysimetric tank and by doing water balance uh, uh, measurement uh, we know the evapotranspiration uh, of that specified crop uh, and we can measure that actually that is the measurement okay then uh, uh, that is one side so we know etc okay and on another side uh, uh, if there is a ground uh, meteorological observatory or uh, what we say the automatic weather station nearby, then by specified method, say uh, penman monte method, we can estimate the uh, reference crop evapotranspiration. I have told you formula already. And then if we take the ratio of 
uh, ETC, that is the evapotranspiration of the crop, which is measured in lysimeter or by field water balance method, to the uh, evapotranspiration of the reference crop, that is ETR. So, we get KC, so crop coefficient. So, thus crop coefficient is to be determined experimentally or if it is not determined experimentally, okay. So, uh, FAO has documented uh, the crop coefficients of the different crops and normally this crop coefficient vary over the crop growth season uh, as which is indicated uh, in the graph uh, uh, at the right hand side. So, if you see uh, on uh, y axis there is crop coefficient on and on x axis it is the ratio of t by t that is t is any day and t is the total crop, crop growth period. Okay. So, if 120 is the total crop, uh, crop growth period, then uh, 1 that is it is the end of the crop growth period that is 120 by 120. Uh, so, uh, th this is required for the normalization uh, because for certain region crop growth period may be 120, for certain region crop growth period may be 140. But basically, uh, if you see uh, the blue curve, it is the FAO crop coefficient curve for a specified crop. So, crop coefficient varies as per the crop growth stage. If you see that uh, uh, it is it, it is uh, less uh, uh, in the beginning, then it goes on increasing and towards the end it is again less actually. Okay, So, this also means that uh, uh, the water requirement or evapotranspiration of the specified crop is less in the beginning Okay, and then it goes on increasing and then towards the end it is also less. The another curve which is the black curve, uh, this is the crop coefficient curve for the same crop uh, which is uh, measured with the help of lysimeter locally actually. Okay. So, there is a difference in the crop coefficient which is documented by FAO and which is measured locally. But in the absence of locally derived crop coefficient values, uh, we can uh, uh, use uh, or we have to use in fact the FAO derived crop coefficient. So, the crop coefficients they are documented either by FAO or they are determined uh, locally. Okay. So, crop coefficient once they are available uh, uh, for the specified crop uh, uh, over its crop growth season, okay, then we can estimate ETR with the help of the uh, uh, formulae by using the uh, corresponding uh, weather values. So, multiplication of the ETR into crop coefficient gives us the uh, evapotranspiration of the specified crop. Say for example, if I want to find out uh, today what is the evapotranspiration of a specified crop, then what I will do, uh, I, 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 I will use the weather parameters uh, of uh, uh, today that is uh, preceding 24 hours. Okay. So, what is the maximum temperature of preceding 24 hours, what is the minimum temperature, uh, what is the maximum uh, uh, relative humidity, minimum relative humidity, average wind speed and sunshine hours of previous 24 hours. I will put that into uh, one of the estimation formula, say Penman Monte, and I will determine the value of ETR. Say if the, that value of ETR is 8, and at the same time, I will find out the value of crop coefficient of that specified day from this graph or corresponding equation, and I will multiply. Say by chance, if that value is say uh, 6 uh, or 0 0.6, so ETR is 8 mm, and the case is 0 0.6, so 8 into 0 0.6, that is uh, 4.8, is the uh, evapotranspiration of that specified crop. So, in this way, evapotranspiration of the specified crop is to be determined. And as, as I told a uh, uh, few minutes before, evapotranspiration is the major component of the water requirement. Again, come back to uh, uh, the sketch on the right hand side. Uh, the first is uh, related to the reference crop evapotranspiration. Say it is the weather parameters and reference crop combination of this will give us the water need of the grass that is the reference crop evapotranspiration. Then water needs of the grass are reference crop evapotranspiration and the crop characteristics that is say crop coefficient here. Its combination will give us the crop water need uh, of the specified crop that is the evapotranspiration of the specified crop. So, this figure will uh, explain uh, uh, the contribution of each of these parameters. So, in first reference crop evapotranspiration, it is the contribution of the weather parameters and the crop is standard. Okay. And in second uh, crop evapotranspiration, it is the contribution of the weather parameters and at the same time the contribution of the crop characteristics. So, we will get the crop water needs or evapotranspiration of the specified crop. Then consumptive use. 
Okay. Uh, many a time we use the word consumptive. In fact, the consumptive use is the water that is consumed in the process of evapotranspiration and for satisfying the needs of water for metabolic activities. Now, as we know that ETC, evapotranspiration of a specified crop is the water lost in the process of evaporation and transpiration, uh, then this is one. But at the same time, uh, some water is consumed uh, for its growth itself. Say, for example, uh, today height of the plant is, say, 15 centimeter, but a few weeks later, uh, uh, it will be 30 centimeter, then maybe 60 centimeter. So, plant is also growing. So, certain water is required for its metabolic activities, its growth, preparation of the foods and so on. Okay? So, we have to uh, add that water into the evapotranspiration process. So, together it is consumptive use. So, consumptive use uses the water which is consumed in the process of evaporation and transpiration together called as evapotranspiration and also water which is required for the growth of plant itself and it is also known as the water that is needed for satisfying the needs for metabolic activities, say MA. So, consumptive use is the evapotranspiration of the specified crop and the water which is required for satisfying the metabolic activities of that specified crop. Now, there is a term water requirement. So, you can read from the screen the definition of the water requirement. Water requirement is the total quantity of water required to mature an adequately irrigated crop to meet the losses due to evapotranspiration or consumptive use plus the additional water required for special operations needs such as land preparation, transplanting, leaching of soils below the crop root zone, frost control, etc. So this is the general definition. Okay. So what requirement is now? It is the consumptive use plus the water required for the special needs. Say for example, we have to prepare the land, we have to uh, do the transplanting for which we need the water and at the same time if say uh, soil is salt affected then we have to leach the salt uh, below the crop root zone uh, in order to provide the healthy environment of the specified crop into the root zone okay sometime for frost control we have to apply the water so if we make some of all those water which is required for all these special needs then consumptive use plus what required for the special needs is the water requirement okay but if you want to find out the water requirement of the specified day and for which say we don't need uh, any water for the special needs then in that case the water requirement is nothing but the consumptive use okay but when we uh, find out the water requirement for the entire season that is the seasonal water requirement then in that case we have to consider the water requirement uh, for all the special needs plus the water requirement for the consumptive use but on a daily basis say for example in case of the drip irrigation we apply water quite frequently daily alternate day or maybe uh, two or three times a week then in that case we have to calculate the uh, consumptive use requirement over that period say one day two day or three day and in fact that is water requirement okay but for a seasonal water requirement we have to add water which is required for uh, all its special by now it is clear that uh, water requirement uh, is evaporation and transpiration of a specified crop plus what required for its metabolic activities and at the same time plus what required for the special needs now let us come to the irrigation water requirement now water requirement is the water needs but irrigation water requirement is the water which is to be applied by specified irrigation method actually so in that case uh, we have to also to consider the water which is being contributed from different sources not only irrigation because in irrigation we apply water uh, by the process of irrigation only that is uh, uh, artificial application of the water okay and so let us consider if there is no contribution of water uh, from any other source and we don't need water uh, to any other source then in that case irrigation requirement and water requirement are same okay but many a times there is contribution of water from other source say rainfall okay rainfall is one of the source which can contribute to the water requirement and in that case our irrigation requirement will be reduced at the same time there could be the contribution of water from the uh, groundwater as well 
okay if there is shallow water table then uh, because of the capillary rise of the water from the shallow uh, water table uh, to the soil root zone water will be contributed uh, in the process of water requirement okay and at the same time if we consider uh, for the seasonal basis there may be water available already in the soil root zone then maybe uh, we will have to apply water less as a result of irrigation but at the same time many a times we need to make the water available to the next season in the root zone then in that case maybe uh, we have to add uh, water by the process of irrigation okay so water requirement and irrigation water requirement they are uh, different in the sense that uh, water requirement is just the uh, uh, requirement of the uh, water by the process of evaporation transpiration and water which is required for its plant growth and also water uh, to manage uh, the land surface such as water uh, which is required for the special needs uh, land preparation uh, then leaching and all those things okay but irrigation water requirement is the water which is required to satisfy these water requirement needs actually but if there is water which is being contributed from different source then uh, we have to consider that water or we have to apply less water and by chance if we have to make water available through irrigation for some other purposes say for example storing the water in the root zone for the next crop then also we have to consider that water in irrigation requirement so irrigation requirement as uh, uh, displayed on the screen includes water requirement exclusive of effective precipitation of rainfall carry over soil moisture from the earlier season and to the next season or groundwater contribution or other gains in soil moisture that is required consumptively for crop production so by means of the formula irrigation requirement is equal to water requirement minus effective rainfall that is this is the contribution of rainfall then minus delta s that is the if there is already certain moisture exists in the soil root zone uh, prior to irrigation or uh, prior to first irrigation that we have to consider plus means if we want to make water available uh, uh, to the next crop in the soil root zone minus means if there is a contribution of uh, water uh, from the groundwater so gwc by capillary process that also we have to consider and minus om that is uh, other gains of the soil moisture uh, maybe there is dew and all those things okay so basically irrigation requirement uh, is uh, the water requirement minus uh, all kinds of the gain which is other than uh, irrigation actually that we have to consider okay and in this case i have uh, again specifically uh, defined effective rainfall because all the rainfall that falls on the ground surface may not be uh, contributing to the uh, soil root zone or may not be contributing to the irrigation requirement so effective rainfall is that portion of total annual or seasonal rainfall which is usually directly and or indirectly for meeting the crop water needs in crop production at the site where it falls but without pumping okay so this means that effective rainfall is that portion of the water which in fact contributes uh, to the uh, crop water needs that only we have to consider if say for example today 50 mm of the rainfall is there and out of which only if 30 mm is contributed uh, to the crop water needs then effective rainfall is 30 mm uh, if 20 mm is going out of the root zone or flowing over the land surface then this is not the effective rainfall as far as the irrigation is concerned okay so therefore we have to consider the uh, contribution of the effective rainfall only okay so now if you consider again this uh, our the previous sketch uh, the first is again uh, the water needs of the reference crop you have to transpiration Uh, which is combination of weather parameters and the reference crop characteristics then water requirement of the specified crop is the combination of uh, the water needs of the grass and the crop characteristics of the specified crop and here irrigation water need is the combination of the crop water needs for the specified crop and effective rainfall in fact it is subtracted actually okay so water requirement uh, could be more than the irrigation requirement or irrigation requirement could be less than the uh, water requirement if there is contribution of the effective rainfall or groundwater contribution so we need to consider that and basically irrigation requirement is important in the sense that 
we apply water through any irrigation method to satisfy the irrigation needs. So, therefore, irrigation water requirement or irrigation requirement is important. Okay. Uh, then, uh, basically, irrigation water requirement is now the total amount of water applied through irrigation system, uh, inclusive of losses associated with the irrigation system, uh, which is also termed as gross irrigation requirement. Okay. Uh, so, we have to see, we, we just saw the irrigation water requirement. But when we apply water uh, for irrigation through irrigation methods, there are certain losses uh, associated with the system itself and we have to add those losses into the irrigation requirement uh, to obtain gross irrigation requirements. So basically we have to apply gross irrigation requirements. Say for example, if I am applying 10 millimeter of water today, but my irrigation system is not enough uh, efficient to apply all the 10 a millimeter of water that I am diverting from the source into the root zone. Okay, So, in that case, uh, maybe some 2 or 3 millimeter of the water is lost, then I have to apply this 2 or 3 millimeter of water extra to the irrigation requirement and therefore, grass irrigation requirement considers the irrigation requirement and the water which is, uh, uh, which is lost in the process of the pro irrigation itself okay and this water loss may be different by different irrigation methods for example in surface irrigation method 50 to 60 percent of the water is lost say for example if i want to apply 10 mm of the water in the process of irrigation into the root zone i may have to divert 20 mm of water from the source by surface irrigation in case of uh, sprinkler irrigation method the efficiency of the system is more say to 25 percent so, instead of uh, 20 uh, millimeter of water uh, which is required to be diverted from the surf by the surface irrigation method, I may divert only 14 or 15 mm of water. Whereas, in case of the drip irrigation method, efficiency is 90 to 95 percent, uh, then I may divert only 12 mm of water. So, this 12 mm or 15 mm or 20 mm is nothing but the grass irrigation requirement and uh, this extra water is required. Uh, to take into the losses associated with the different irrigation system. And normally, this GIR, that is gross irrigation requirement, is irrigation requirement divided by the efficiency of the system. And let us remember that uh, um, more the system is efficient, uh, uh, less will be the gap between irrigation requirement and gross irrigation requirement. For 100% uh, uh, efficient system, uh, the gross irrigation requirement and irrigation requirement will be same actually. Okay. Now, uh, below uh, I have again uh, added all those parameters which are required for irrigation requirement. So, irrigation requirement is equal to evapotranspiration of the crop plus water required for metabolic activities plus water required for special needs minus effective rainfall minus or plus water which is stored in the root zone from the previous season or to be uh, kept in the root zone for the next season minus contribution of the water from the uh, capillary of groundwater minus contribution of the water from other sources. Okay. But let us consider that. Uh, so, on a particular day or during the season or during particular period, okay, uh, uh, we do not need water required for any special needs. There is no contribution of uh, effective rainfall. There is no contribution of water uh, from the groundwater or uh, any other sources or uh, there is no water uh, which is coming from the previous season and water is not to be made available to the next season, then in fact, irrigation requirement is equal to evapotranspiration of the crop plus water which is required for its metabolic activity. But uh, from the literature and from the experimentation, it has been found that water required for the metabolic activity is very negligible compared to the water required in the process of evaporation and transpiration. So, many a time for estimation purpose, we require the water which is required for satisfying the metabolic activities, water needs of any crop. So, in that case, irrigation water requirement becomes the ETC itself. So, this is the importance of evapotranspiration of any crop. Okay. So, normally during the season, when we want to estimate uh, the water requirement of the crop, okay, then uh, uh, water requirement is nothing but ETC and we can ignore uh, all other requirement and irrigation requirement becomes the evapotranspiration of the crop. But when we want to calculate this on the seasonal basis, we may consider but once we have planted the crop and we have started uh, irrigating the crop and by any method, then uh, irrigation requirement is nothing but the evapotranspiration requirement of the crop. But 
we have to calculate gross irrigation requirement because we are applying water by certain system actually and there are always losses associated with that system so basically gross irrigation requirement becomes the vapor transpiration of crop divided by efficiency so for example if i calculated the vapor transpiration of the crop as say 8 mm and if my efficiency is 0.9 then 8 divided by 0.9 it may become 7.2 or something is the gross irrigation requirement that is to be applied through the irrigation method or irrigation system. Now, in drip irrigation, now in drip irrigation, irrigation requirement is a bit different actually. Okay, so uh, what we have seen that uh, irrigation requirement is equal to evapotranspiration of the crop actually. If we ignore other things, which practically we can uh, while our system is in operation, okay, uh, then it is good for surface and sprinkler irrigation method, wherein we irrigate the entire portion of the land but in drip irrigation we don't do that this is in fact one of the major benefits of the drip irrigation in drip irrigation we can uh, uh, we, we, uh, we can keep the unwanted area un unweighted actually so it is not necessary or we can uh, keep the uh, unwanted area dry okay so this is possible so in drip irrigation method so what we do so in row crop say for example if you see there is cabbage crop uh, we have brought two rows of the cabbage crop uh, nearer so we form the pair actually and we are using one lateral per pair okay so in between in between two pairs uh, uh, there is a space which is dry actually where we don't apply water because we apply water only into the root zone of the crop okay so root zone of the crop is along this uh, pair of the two rows actually but in between two pair there is dry patch okay so we don't apply water to the dry patch okay in drip irrigation it is possible because in drip irrigation method we bring water right up to the root zone of the crop so we can just wet the root zone of the crop we can just wet this entire stream and we can keep the space between two streams dry so we in fact means we can apply less water compared to uh, sprinkler irrigation where in some sprinkler irrigation or surface irrigation we cannot keep the portion of the land dry actually. so it is not possible so similarly you see here for the cotton crop as well so we brought two rows of the crop together form one pair so this is one pair this is another pair and in between two pair the patch or this entire strip is dry so we apply water only for this root zone not here Okay, so this is one of the uh, biggest strength of the drip irrigation method. Again, if you see this orchard plantation, in case of this, this is the pomegranate plantation. Okay, so here we just uh, uh, make sure that the root zone of this pomegranate uh, tree is wetted and in between two root zone or in between two plants, uh, there is uh, the dry portion. Similarly, in between two rows also, there is dry stream. So we need not to apply water in the unwanted area in fact we don't apply water by drip irrigation method in unwanted area but in surface and sprinkler we have to apply so therefore is uh, surface and sprinkler we have to wait the entire land but in case of the drip we wait only the desired portion and we keep some portion of the land dry so therefore we, uh, uh, th therefore the water requirement our irrigation requirement water requirement will be same but irrigation requirement will be uh, becomes less actually because uh, by means of uh, irrigation process we apply less water because we are not applying water to the dry portion so therefore that weighted area factor comes into the picture so weighted area factor is defined as the proportion of the area the soil root zone that is to be weighted to the total area so it is the proportion of the soil uh, it is the proportion of the area of the soil root zone to the area that is weighted actually or to the entire area so 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 if uh, my entire area is uh, say one hectare and if uh, i can keep say 20 percent of the area dry so i need to say irrigate only 0.8 hectare okay so point uh, uh, two, uh, point 0.20 hectare uh, i can keep it dry so 0 0.20 divided by one that is 0 0.2 becomes the weighted area because i have to give water only to the 80 percent area okay and this is possible in breed so irrigation requirement is nothing but etc into this weighted area factor and this weighted area factor uh, is uh, less uh, for the orchard plantation in fact many times it is 0 0.2 uh, 
uh, 2.6 that is we irrigate only 20 to 60 percent of the area but for the row plants uh, uh, it is uh, it varies from say 0.6 to 0.8 but for close growing crops say, such as onion garlic and wheat it is almost 100 percent that is where to wait the entire area but nevertheless for the row plantations such as flowers uh, such as vegetables we need not to uh, wait the entire area and for archer plantation uh, we have to wait still lesser area okay so irrigation requirement then becomes much less than the water requirement or evapotranspiration of the crop so basically if we use uh, the assumptions which i told you in the previous slide then irrigation requirement becomes evapotranspiration of the crop into weighted area factor and this weighted area factor is specified for uh, all the row plantations and at the same time uh, uh, for the archer plantation so uh, again i repeat uh, the weighted area factor for close growing crops such as onion garlic and wheat is 100 percent so because uh, uh, already uh, the rows are planted so close to each other that uh, there is no meaning uh, for bringing two rows of the plants together okay so we we, we wait entire area just like in case of the sprinkler and uh, surface irrigation but for vegetable and flowers we can bring two rows nearer so we can keep some area dry and this proportion is normally uh, 20 to 40 percent so this means that we can apply 20 to 40 percent less water by irrigation compared to surface and sprinkler okay and similarly in case of the archer plantation it is still less say 20 to 60 percent uh, area uh, is weighted so so we can keep uh, 80 to 40 percent area dry so accordingly this weighted area factor will vary actually so irrigation requirement is equal to evapotranspiration of the crop into weighted area now let us see just one example actually okay so it will be more clear intentionally i have taken i have used here the method for calculating the reference crop evapotranspiration as the pan evaporation so pan evaporation is equal to say here 10 m that is water which is lost in 24 hours by the process of evaporation from the pan is 10 m pan coefficient is 0 0.7 for the of that particular region okay crop coefficient is say 0 0.85 weighted area factor is 0 0.8 and irrigation efficiency is say 0.9 say i am using drip irrigation system so in this case irrigation requirement is etc into weighted area factor so this is the formula which i told you in the previous slide so irrigation requirement is equal to evapotranspiration of the specified crop into weighted area now evapotranspiration of the specified crop here is etc is equal to etr into kc that is evapotranspiration of the reference crop into crop coefficient and evapotranspiration of the reference crop is by pan, uh, by, by, uh, pan method is pan evaporation into crop coefficient okay so we know pan evaporation we know uh, pan coefficient so pan evaporation into pan coefficient is the evapotranspiration of the reference crop so we know now crop coefficient so evapotranspiration of the reference crop into crop coefficient is equal to evapotranspiration of the specified crop now we know evapotranspiration of the specified crop we know the weighted area factor its multiplication will give us the irrigation requirement actually so this is not the uh, gross irrigation requirement but this is the irrigation requirement now let us uh, put all the values into the formula so 10 is the pan evaporation and to convert that pan evaporation into the evapotranspiration from the reference crop, we have to multiply pan evaporation with the pan coefficient. So 10 into 0.7 is 7.0. So ETR is equal to 7.0. Now this ETR is the evapotranspiration of the reference crop. To convert that evapotranspiration from the for a specified crop, we have to multiply uh, evapotranspiration of the reference crop by crop coefficient. So 7.0 into 0.85 is equal to 5.95 is the evapotranspiration of the specified crop so in this way uh, we have converted or we have calculated the evapotranspiration of the specified crop from the evapotranspiration of the reference of crop and crop coefficient now we know the evapotranspiration of the specified crop and if we multiply it by the weighted area factor we know the irrigation requirement of the drip irrigation system say 5.95 into 0.8 4.76 is the irrigation requirement of that particular specified crop and if i want to find out the grass irrigation requirement that is the amount of the water to be delivered then divide this 4.76 by the irrigation efficiency okay. by now we have seen uh, irrigation scheduling how much to irrigate that we have seen actually 
Yes. How to irrigate? That is irrigation method that we already covered in uh, one of our previous training lecture. Okay. How much to irrigate? Uh, uh, though it has also been covered in detail, but I thought uh, 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 let us cover a few important points, and that I think I covered, and uh, I, I hope you have understood. The third component of the irrigation scheduling is when to irrigate. Okay. So I know that. If I irrigate on daily basis, I have to apply say 10 millimeter of water. If I apply on weekly basis, maybe I have to apply 70 millimeter of water. Okay, but whether to irrigate daily, whether to irrigate alternate day, whether to irrigate weekly, monthly, fortnightly. So how to decide that? This is very important. In case of drip irrigation method, it, it, it is the simpler fortunately because drip irrigation method involves the frequent application of the water. But how frequently we should give? So it depends on several other parameters as well. But uh, then for the purpose of application, uh, we, we have made it simpler and say next four or five slides, uh, we'll see uh, the third component of the irrigation scheduling that is when to irrigate. But before that, let us see certain terminologies because when to irrigate is basically related to the soil because uh, whenever we provide the irrigation to the water as per the crop water needs, we provide that water into the soil root zone that is must. And so soil root zone is the reservoir for storing the irrigation water from which plant can take water. So the soil properties, they are very, very, very important when we decide when to irrigate. Because it's, it's like that, if I have enough water, but uh, uh, the soil uh, doesn't have that storage capacity, then there is no use to divert that enough water uh, into the soil root zone. Say, for example, uh, say let us consider that uh, uh, 120 days is the crop growth period and uh, say uh, on an average 5 mm is the uh, water requirement per day. So for entire season of 120 days. I need 600 millimeter of water. So what I will do? I have that 600 millimeter of water stored in my, uh, say, farm reservoir in the beginning of the winter season. So uh, I, I will say that let us divert all that 600 millimeter of water into the soil root zone, and the plant will take water as per its needs. And we need not to apply water for all 120 days. But does this happen? No, because this soil reservoir will not have that capacity to store all these 600 millimeter of water. So it can store only portion of the water needs. Okay, so maybe it is uh, 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 just 10% of that, 60 millimeter of water it can store. So we have to divert only 60 millimeter of water and then this 60 millimeter of water will be uh, taken by the plant. But again, this is not that simple because we are storing water into the soil reservoir and plant, ha plant root has to extract the water from the soil reservoir. Okay, so the capacity of the water to extract the water from the soil reservoir again depends on how much water is stored in the soil root zone. Say for example, entire soil root zone is filled with water. Plant will not find any difficulty in extracting the water through this soil root zone. But if soil root zone is about to be emptied, then plant will find water to extract from the soil root zone, it will find difficulties and maybe plant will be uh, subjected to the stress and plant growth will be hampered. So this is just like if we take one example. So if there is a tank actually uh, and uh, uh, if, that, if that tank is completely filled with water and I take water from that tank on daily basis. Okay. So let us consider today this tank is filled with water Okay. and then I can easily take water from the tank uh, which is a certain pot. Okay, uh, and and no problem. But uh, tomorrow, uh, as I have consumed some water today, the water level in the tank will be reduced. Okay, and tomorrow, no problem. Uh, I, I can take water as per my need. But say after four or five days, uh, water level in the tank is much reduced. Maybe it is one fourth uh, of the water that was stored on the first day. So then, what I have to do? Uh, I, I, I have to bend to take the water uh, uh, from the uh, tank. So I have to exert extra pressure actually okay and uh, if this is continued for a few more days then uh, maybe uh, 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 i will find a lot of difficulties in taking water so water is there in tank but still i find difficulties in taking water from the tank so naturally i will get less water okay i cannot take all the water that is required by me uh, I, I will I, I will get less water and at the same time uh, to obtain that even less water i will have to exert more so 
in fact my health uh, will be deteriorated because of that okay the same thing happens in case of the uh, plant root zone as well okay so if the soil root zone is completely filled with water so plant can take water easily because at that case we say that when the soil root zone is filled with water uh, uh, the tension at which uh, the soil uh, water particle uh, are held to the soil particle is less and plant will find less difficulty in taking that water but uh, as water is being extracted on daily basis by the plant water in the soil root zone, uh, zone will be reduced and as water is reduced the plant will find difficulties in taking water and less and less water will be available to the plant actually okay so that's why we have to consider all those things while deciding the uh, irrigation interval that is when to irrigate so we have to irrigate in such a way that the plant won't find any difficulties in extracting the water from the soil root zone say for example if today i fill entire uh, soil root zone with water then uh, uh, maybe tomorrow plant won't find any difficulty day after tomorrow plant will, won't find any difficulty and but maybe on third fourth day plant will find slight difficulty and from fifth day plant will find more difficulty then i have to make sure that i fill again the root zone uh, with the remaining water uh, on the fourth day or fifth day so that for the next consecutive three four days the plant will not find any difficulty in extracting the water so this is the importance of considering the uh, soil root zone properties uh, while deciding the uh, irrigation interval in surface and sprinkler irrigation we have to be very careful but in drip irrigation as anyway this is the method of frequently applying water so there are less difficulties in uh, performing this let us uh, uh, know about uh, the important soil properties uh, that are important in fact uh, uh, for deciding uh, when to irrigate okay uh, first is the saturation point okay saturation point is the total water content of the soil when all the pores of the soils are filled with water the maximum water holding capacity of the soil and the soil is at maximum water retention capacity okay so when the uh, soil uh, when all the pores of the uh, soil matrix they are filled with water then we call the soil is at the saturation but this is not the desirable situation because we want uh, normally the ratio of solid water and air matrix as 50 is to 25 is to 25 uh, percent so that uh, 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 the air is circulated in the soil matrix and uh, uh, the plant will get the uh, enough oxygen for uh, for the process of its metabolic uh, activity okay but here i have shown in case of the saturation all the pores they are filled with water then second is the fill capacity this is the moisture content uh, lower than the saturation point and this is the amount of water held in the soil after excess water has been drained by gravity and the rate of downward movement has relatively become stable so for example all the pores they are filled with water so it is the saturation and then uh, if i allow this water to drain for some time or few days or few hours then all the water which is held freely uh, in the pores uh, that are to be occupied by in fact air that water will be drained and the remaining water is considered as the water at the field capacity and the third is permanent wilting point is considered as the lower limit of the soil moisture that is available to the plants okay so uh, uh, when water is at the field capacity then uh, the plant will start taking uh, water or water will be lost in the process of evapotranspiration water content in the soil will uh, drop slowly and the stage will reach that uh, uh, the stage of the moisture content will reach that beyond uh, that if soil moisture content is dropped plant cannot take water or if we continue this process for longer time and as plant cannot take water plant will die or will so this is known as the permanent wilting point okay so again remember that there are three cases one is when all the uh, pores in the soils including the pores that are to be filled with the water and air are filled with water then this is known as the saturation this is not desirable so we should never apply water up to the saturation okay uh, then if uh, after few hours uh, or few days uh, the water which is held in the pores uh, that are uh, uh, to be occupied in fact by the air but water is poured into the, those pores the uh, those uh, that water will be drained actually okay so that water uh, will be drained we call this as the gravitational water and water which is left is available to the plant and at that particular point uh, water uh, soil is considered to be at the field capacity 
okay and then when slowly water is lost in the process of evaporation and transpiration the stage will reach that beyond that soil moisture water won't be available uh, to the plant because water will be held tightly uh, to the soil pores and plant cannot take uh, water from that uh, though water exists are uh, in the soil root zone and we call this as the uh, wilting point because beyond this moisture content plant will wilt or die okay so these three terms are very important in the sense that uh, uh, when we apply water by surface irrigation method normally uh, water uh, will be applied up to the saturation and two days will be required to drain off the water in the uh, air pores actually and to reach it to the field capacity and during these two days uh, the uh, plants uh, will not have the healthy condition in its soil root zone and it will affect the uh, what we call as the plant yield as well but in case of the sprinkler and drip irrigation method it is possible to apply exactly the amount of the water uh, that is required to take the soil moisture in the root zone up to the field capacity not beyond the field capacity okay so this is possible by uh, means of the drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation method and additionally in case of the drip irrigation method it is also possible uh, to apply the water so frequently that uh, will not take water up to the wilting point uh, it is possible by drip irrigation method so these are the three terminologies uh, three limits that we must consider uh, when we study when to irrigate okay now here i have shown uh, this uh, diagrammatically actually so previously we have seen uh, this field capacity and wilting point uh, in fact this means that the water in between field capacity and the wilting point is the water that is available for the plant growth okay water which is more than the field capacity is not available to the plant growth because uh, this is the gravitational water excess water and as it is uh, filled in the air pores anyway it is not available actually similarly water which exists in the soil root zone uh, below the wilting point this is not also available to the plant because plant cannot exert that much pressure to extract the water from the soil root zone so water available uh, for the plant growth is the water which is held in between field capacity and wilting point so which is shown here say di uh, diagrammatically that is the gray area between two dotted curves is the uh, 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 is the available water and you may wonder uh, why this is not uh, constant uh, throughout and it is varying it is because uh, uh, if on x axis if you see that there is the type of the soil sandy soil sandy loam loam silt loam clay clay loam clay soil that is from left to right we are moving from light soil to heavy soil okay so it is the property of the soil okay in case of the sandy soil if you see the uh, water available is less uh, but in case of uh, the clay soil or in fact uh, the loamy soil uh, available water is more because in case of the loamy soil or clay soil the difference between field capacity and wilting point is more whereas in case of the sandy soil uh, this difference is less because in case of the sandy soil wilting point is also le less because uh, the water is drained off quickly and at the same time field capacity is also less because water cannot be uh, held uh, uh, as it is held in case of the clay or loamy soil. So, uh, when we decide when to irrigate, we have to consider the soil type because the water holding capacity or water that is made available in the soil root zone is not same in all kinds of the soil. In fact, in case of the sandy soil, it is less. In case of the loamy and clay soil, it is more actually. So, the, in fact, the capacity of the reservoir uh, is different. Uh, in different kind of the soil the capacity of the reservoir which can store water is different in light soil and it is different in heavy soil and therefore uh, in one go we can apply more water if the soil is clay but we cannot apply more water we have to apply less water in sandy soil because its reservoir capacity is less even if we try to apply more water so it will be drained off from the soil root zone and that will be wasted actually so that's why we have to consider this and the same kind of the figure i have shown uh, again uh, uh, on the uh, right side okay so basically this water holding capacity vary as per soil type that is the capacity of the soil reservoir uh, to store the water is different in light soil is different in medium soil is different in heavy soil so therefore uh, the water to be applied uh, in light soil medium soil and heavy soil will also vary and therefore the frequency at which water to be applied in light soil 
uh, then uh, medium soil and uh, heavy soil will also vary. So naturally, by common sense, as uh, a sandy soil or light soil can store less amount of the water compared to the clay soil or loamy soil, so we have to apply water in sandy soil more frequently and in less amount compared to the heavy soil. Here in we can apply water uh, less frequently and with more amount. So this is what I wanted to point out here. Then another thing is the readily available water. Okay, all the water uh, which exists between uh, the wilting point and fill capacity is the available water. But as I told in the beginning, uh, that uh, uh, all the water, though it is available, but not all the water is readily available. I have also given you the example of the empty example of the tank uh, from which uh, uh, we take water for say our purpose. So when it is completely filled, we won't find any difficulty in taking water from the tank. But when it is uh, being emptied or uh, near to the bottom, so we, uh, we though water exists there, and though water we can take some of the water from the tank. Okay, so we cannot take all the, uh, the water as per our needs. So we, we have to take the water, uh, 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 portion of the water which is only available. So we can, we have to take less water and also with the great efforts. The same thing happens uh, to the plant for taking the water from the soil root zone. Say for example, uh, I have shown here uh, uh, the first left hand side graph. Uh, on x axis, say there is. Uh, uh, there is moisture contained and if you see uh, here theta fc means water is at the fill capacity here theta wp means water is at the wilting point so here uh, maximum water that can be made available to the plant is there okay so for few days uh, for few days what what will happen the plant uh, will have no stress actually because this is the level of stress on y axis this is the level of stress i repeat this gra uh, graph again uh, on x axis it is the moisture content okay so here x axis uh, and it is varying from fill capacity to wilting point okay on y axis uh, it is the stress actually uh, the that the plant uh, exert okay while taking the water so it is from 1 to 0 1 is means uh, it is no stress and zero means it is uh, maximum space okay and here theta fc means it is the maximum water and theta wp it is the minimum water okay so as we move, as we move from maximum water to minimum water okay the stress is different actually okay so for theta uh, uh, the uh, when moisture content uh, uh, is at theta fc okay uh, and for a few days uh, it uh, there is no stress but when moisture content uh, starts to drop actually okay like this uh, then you see the stress has increased so here it is 20 percent stress here it is 40 percent stress here it is 60 percent stress and when moisture content is at wilting point uh, it is 100 percent stress okay so when we move when the moisture content is reduced from fill capacity to wilting point okay so uh, the stress to extract the moisture content will also increase okay but from field capacity up to certain limit in fact there is no stress actually at field capacity there is no stress but if the moisture content is still reduced so below field capacity so here uh, so for example if the field capacity is 40 and wilting point is 20 at 40 there is no stress but at uh, uh, 38 also there is no stress uh, 34 there is no stress and maybe up to uh, 30 there is no stress at all okay you see from this to this there is no stress this coefficient is 1 but then after 30 when it's uh, uh, when uh, when it is reduced then st stress starts actually okay so up to certain point uh, below the field capacity there is no stress but after that the stress goes on increasing and when it reaches to wilting point there is the maximum stress actually means plant cannot take the water okay so the point up to which there is no stress is known as the readily available water and the moisture content at this is known as the moisture content at the depletion point so this means that uh, i will again repeat that uh, if the moisture content uh, in the uh, at the start of the irrigation is saved at the field capacity so so this means that the entire soil reservoir is filled with water uh, then maybe tomorrow certain water will be lost in the process of evapotranspiration uh, still there won't be any stress okay 
after part another three four days there won't be any stress okay but when moisture content still drops from the soil reservoir and if we don't refill the soil reservoir with any irrigation water then the plant will find certain difficulties in taking water and the point up to which the plant won't find any stress in extracting the water is known as the readily available water and again the limit of the readily available water is different in different kinds of the soil if you see the right hand uh, figure again it is from light soil to heavy soil sand sandy loam loam silt loam clay loam silt loam clay and this is the water content uh, the difference between two extreme lines is the available water and the difference between this uh, top first two lines is the readily available water if you see that readily available water is less in sandy soils then still more in sand loam soil it is still more in loamy soil but it is maximum is in silt loam soil okay and followed by this clay soil okay so when we decide the irrigation interval we have to consider these facts okay that is the readily available soil water is more in case of the uh, silt loam soil followed by clay loam soil uh, then silty clay soil then clay soil and it is less in sandy loam soil and sandy sandy soil actually so this has to be uh, this this has to be considered exclusively when we decide the interval between uh, two irrigations in fact uh, uh, we have to consider the soil type and the interval between two irrigations should be such that okay uh, we have to provide if we provide uh, today irrigation water and fill the soil root zone with the fill capacity so we have to give the next irrigation in any case uh, before the soil moisture is dropped below the readily available water otherwise if it drops below the readily available water plant will still be there uh, uh, but then plant will find the stress in extracting the water and it will hamper its growth and if it reaches up to the wilting point and till we if we up, don't apply water then plant will wilt actually so therefore the tagline is that apply water up to the fill capacity and when the moisture drops below the readily soil moisture we have to refill that uh, entire root zone uh, with the help of irrigation water and such should be our irrigation interval uh, these are the uh, some of the numerical values of the water holding capacity of the different soil so this is the soil texture coarse sand sand loamy sand sand loam loam silt loam silt clay loam clay loam silty clay clay and in second column values of fill capacity in third column values of building point and in fourth column uh, it is total available water these values are important uh, to schedule the irrigations by the different irrigation methods now then what should be the approach actually let us see what should be approach so let us consider uh, the two sketches at the bottom one is the left hand side and another is the right hand side in left hand side uh, again uh, there is one box the top of the box means uh, the water is filled uh, with water it is fill capacity you can consider bottom of the box you can consider as the wilting point and uh, this red line you can consider as the readily available water okay so if you consider the first figure uh, then uh, say day one uh, tank is completely filled you, you can see here water is at the fill capacity okay plant is taking water okay then day two uh, the water is uh, water in the tank is uh, uh, less because uh, some of the water has already been taken from the tank or soil reservoir by the plant in the process of evapotranspiration in third it is still less fourth still less fifth still less sixth still less and on seventh day you find that water in the reservoir has reached to the readily available soil moisture okay and on eight plant will find some difficulties nine some difficulties ten some difficulties you see that uh, uh, the plant how it is behaving it is wilting actually and when it reached up to the wilting point it is almost at the dying stage actually okay so in this particular kind of the soil so we have to apply water on fifth or sixth days only in order not to uh, uh, not to have stress on the plant to extract the water so this is explained in the right hand figure actually okay so on first day water is uh, filled up to the fill capacity soil reservoir is filled second no problem it, though it is less but plant is not uh, 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 feeling any stress third no stress fourth no stress 
but as soon as uh, the water is approaching to the readily we have filled the soil root zone with water actually okay so as the water is again filled uh, 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 soil reservoir is again filled with water uh, then uh, it is full so plant is not finding any stress and again before reaching the water up to the readily soil water uh, uh, level uh, the we have, we have provided irrigation water so that again soil reservoir is filled and we are continuing this so this should be the practice actually so we have to apply water before the soil moisture content in the soil reservoir has reached to the readily available so that plant will uh, never feel stressed and we will get the maximum uh, production because uh, there is no water stress actually so this should be our approach okay now then when to irrigate in drip irrigation method okay uh, uh, now uh, in fact uh, i'm abruptly closing uh, to the irrigation interval of drip irrigation because uh, in case of the drip irrigation method uh, we have conducted lot of experiment and at the end of this we found that in drip irrigation method if soil is light uh, we have to irrigate daily actually okay at least once in a day because in case of the light soil uh, the uh, soil reservoir storage capacity is less in case of the medium soil uh, we have to apply uh, at least uh, once in two days that is the alternate day okay and in case of the heavy soil we have to apply at least once in three days actually Okay, so this means that in light soil our irrigation frequency should be daily in medium soil alternate day in heavy soil two days in between so in light soil uh, uh, but uh, though we have to provide irrigation daily and in medium soil, medium soil though we have to provide irrigation at an alternate day but we, we can still provide irrigation daily basis no problem in heavy soil we have to provide irrigation at least once in three days but we can provide irrigation daily or alternate day no problem at the same time as we are applying water in case of the light cell daily and in case of the heavy cell we can apply water at least once in three days this does not mean that in heavy cell we, we need less water and in light cell we need more water as we are applying water daily in heavy cell though we are applying water once in three days but as the uh, uh, reservoir capacity uh, of the soil root zone is more in heavy soil in one go we can apply more water that is water equivalent to three days of the water requirement we can apply in one go uh, in case of the heavy soil uh, because that is the capacity of the soil reservoir in case of the heavy soil in case of the light soil as the capacity of the reservoir is less so we have to apply water which is equivalent to the water requirement of only one day into the soil root zone and so that uh, in one day plant will take uh, the water uh, uh, from the soil root zone and we have to apply water to the next day so the thumb rule is that let us apply water daily in light soil in medium soil maybe alternate day and in heavy soil maybe uh, uh, once in a three days but this rule doesn't mean that we shouldn't apply water daily or alternate day in medium or heavy soil uh, uh, more frequent irrigation they are always advisable but if the soil is very light or uh, if we are using soil media in poly house or shaded house okay uh, then as that media is having very less water holding capacity then in that case we may have to apply water four or five times a day actually depends on the water holding capacity or water retention capacity of the soil media which we are using okay now let us see uh, what are the irrigation scheduling current practices? Once we decided to use the micro irrigation method such as drip irrigation, micro sprinkler irrigation method. So this answers our first question that is how to irrigate for efficient irrigation scheduling. Uh, let us adopt the uh, efficient irrigation method. So we have adopted that. But by this method then we have to apply the specified quantity of water at specified interval. Now I have shown you, I have described the concept and the different terminology required for this purpose and also the procedure for calculating how much water to be applied and uh, when to be applied. But you see that uh, all this procedure involves us to know uh, the weather parameters, crop parameters, soil parameters, weather parameters uh, vary daily from location to location, crop parameters vary daily from location to location soil parameters though they do not vary daily but they vary from location to location actually okay and as far as uh, the weather parameters and crop parameters data are concerned then we should know the data on those days those specified days during which uh, we are planning for the irrigation it is very important 
how these data will be made available and at the former level it is very difficult so in case of the uh, then what are the current practices actually uh, are really these data available to the farmers okay are really farmers they are using this data for deciding how much to irrigate and when to irrigate precisely uh, and what is the current practice in the field uh, that uh, we should see first and before going for the real time irrigation schedule okay uh the current practice is uh, one either to go uh, use the average historical values actually okay so so for example uh, 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 the state of maharashtra is there or state of uh, uttar pradesh is there in india okay then uh, for any specified crop let us uh, use the uh, uh, the regional average uh, for long terms maybe 30 years 40 years average of the uh, historical values and that is also regional actually over over the entire state of the maharashtra uh, over the entire uh, uttar pradesh state or even over the small country actually and use these average values okay so for that the tables are available okay so uh, i have shown here uh, you may not see but this is just for example and it is available on our website which i am going to refer you later on okay but then for each week uh what is the reference crop evapotranspiration for each week uh what is the crop evapotranspiration uh for each week what is the irrigation requirement by the different methods such kind of the tabulated information is available uh but many uh, uh many places this information is available uh regionally so over the state over the province and which is the average information and also this is based on the historical data okay so in that case if this information is available still at the block level still at the uh, or the village level uh, then uh, there will be some uh, what we call as the precise information but when this information is available at the regional level province or state level then average of the data weather data or crop data of the entire province and applying it to the field it will naturally lead to the error and coupled with the average historical data we know that uh, so uh, weather parameters in actual condition they don't follow the average historical say for example uh, I, i have calculated the reference crop evapotranspiration from say 30 years uh, average uh, uh, temperature uh, relative humidity sunshine hours wind speed rainfall data and if that is 10 mm then in actual situation when i apply water the temperature humidity sunshine hours and wind situation will not be the same as those where uh, the average of the 30 years or 40 years of the data and maybe it is 15 mm or maybe it is 8 mm so if it is 15 mm then i am applying less water than required plant will be subjected to the stress if it is 8 mm then i am applying uh, more water uh, uh, than required okay so instead of 8 mm i am applying 10 mm so i am wasting water uh, if it is 15 mm then instead of 15 mm i am applying 10, 10 mm uh, and if it continues for longer time uh then plant will be subjected to the stress and our production will hamper okay so this is the drawback of using the historical averages and similarly if we use the regional averages okay then maybe in say eastern part of the region uh the climate is different in the western part of the region climate is different in the northern part it is different in the southern part is different so we are averaging that and again in averaging say we are applying 8 mm of the water but if it is the eastern part and if it is the humid and if it the water requirement is less uh, then in that case uh, actually water requirement is if it is 6 then we are applying 8 mm so we are wasting water if it is the tropical part then water requirement may be 10 so instead of 10 we are applying 8 so we are applying less water so uh, so this means uh, though this kind of the uh, uh, historical and regional average nevertheless can act as the guidance but at the same time this is not the precise application actually okay because either we are applying less water or more water because the actual situation is different uh, than the uh, uh, average situation of the historical values actual situation is different uh, at the field than the regional average is actually but nevertheless in absence of this information we can use these tables and many extension agencies they advocate to use this kind of the tables and uh, which are designed uh, for the uh, different uh, regions for the different crops uh, and for the different methods okay the attempts are also being made 
to downscale uh, the spatial resolution of the regions. So instead of entire province, let us come to the district level, let us come to the block level, let us come to the village level, then the information uh, is a bit precise. But the combination of the uh, averages over the time span and the averages over the region will certainly result uh, into the errors and in that case either we will be losing water or we will we'll be losing the crop productivity. Okay, so these are uh, the kind of the tables actually. Say for example, this is the district and this is the meteorological week and in that case uh, uh, this is the values of the water requirement of the cabbage crop by drip irrigation at 95% efficiency. So these are the district averages. So, so these are the downscaled actually. And then it can be also downscaled to the block level. Okay, but still these are the averages, and this is not the actual field situation. And also, uh, this is not the uh, actual real-time weather situation as well, because these are the averages over the historical values. Alternative to uh, the tables uh, that I showed and displayed in previous uh, slides, those tables were uh, on the basis of certain region, district. Taluka or block wise tables were there. So we can have uh, the maps uh, of uh, these uh, values, say maybe reference crop evapotranspiration, evapotranspiration of crop, or water requirement of uh, certain crop, or irrigation watch requirement by using uh, uh, specified irrigation method uh, at specified irrigation efficiency. Uh, uh, these maps, if they are developed in GIS, then uh, we will get uh, the information at uh, the particular location, particular latitude or longitude. Uh, this is also, uh, in fact, uh, possible. But then using these maps at the former level uh, will be difficult. And for that purpose, uh, uh, the extension agencies, they need to uh, support the farmers. But at the same time, these maps, they are also based on the historical averages values and may be subjected to uh, certain errors. But nevertheless, uh, it is uh, possible uh, to provide the information on the irrigation scheduling, that is, uh, uh, how much water to be applied, uh, and then deciding the uh, uh, irrigation interval on the basis of soil type, uh, these maps can be used. Uh, then, in fact, what are the current practices? Uh, that is very important. Uh, no, just we have seen uh, the scientific approach actually, the tables and the maps, because uh, why this is scientific approach? Because this is based on the, uh, though on the average data, but these are based on the competition of the evapotranspiration of the reference crop, crop coefficient, uh, then considering the uh, irrigation method, their weighted area factor, irrigation efficiencies and so on. But nevertheless, uh, these maps, they are based on either uh, the averages based on the uh, spatial distribution or averages based on the temporal distribution. But anyway, in the absence of information, these maps can be used because they are uh, uh, on the basis of the uh, scientific information. But uh, uh, adaptability of those maps and uh, tables uh, is also limited uh, uh, against the current practices actually, if we see. The current practice of uh, applying uh, uh, water in terms of amount and in terms of frequency is basically based on certain thumb rules, uh, certain experience, that is one thing, are based on certain ratios which were developed uh, for specified crops and for uh, specified uh, locations actually uh, by the uh, research experimental uh, uh, stations or universities or institutes. These ratios can be also used or sometimes these are being used and of course uh, uh, average historical values uh, based uh, decisions uh, uh, in the form of tables and uh, maps that I have just shown. So these are normally the current practices of uh, uh, deciding the irrigation schedules in terms of uh, how much to irrigate and also uh, when to irrigate. Then what is the adaptability by the farmers for this actually? In fact, uh, as anyway, these methods, these are the thumb rules, experience, and based on the certain ratios, which are location specific, historical values, uh, and historical values seldom repeats in actual condition. Uh, the uh, information based on all these uh, parameters, uh, as it is not realistic, and in actual practice, uh, the results are different. Uh, 
uh, there could be over irrigation into the irriga uh, or under irrigation and its influence is also uh, observed on the productivity and therefore adaptability of the far by the farmers uh, is a bit low uh, except for uh, their own experience uh, in deciding the schedules and uh, amount of the water to be applied. Okay. Uh, and because they have certain limitations as I have told you already and uh, I have also uh, narrated those in the third box. Uh, say suppose for example if someone wants to use the uh, ratio, uh, this ratio needs at least the pan emitter at the farmer's level or at the village level. Okay, then only these ratios they are useful or again if uh, certain average values are used then there is no meaning to these ratios because these ratios it's themselves they are based on certain averages and location specific coupled with the average values of the pan evaporation uh, will uh, tend to give us the erroneous result uh, and the pan evaporometers at the farmer level uh, may give or at the village level uh, may add certain accuracy but it is still not a reality actually. Okay, then uh, information based on historical data, as I already told, problems uh, when uh, weather deviates from the historical average, and it happens quite often now. Okay, and another thing is that in most of this situation, uh, except for the scientific tables and graphs that I have told you, crop growth stage-wise variation is not considered actually. Okay, as we know that. Uh, the irrigation watch requirement uh, which constitutes the evapotranspiration of the crop varies as per the growth stage of the crop okay? uh, because uh, it depends on its age and uh, all other consideration and it is not considered. So these are the limitations and all these lim limitations tend to uh, result in uh, certain thumb rule kind of the thing and ad hoc uh, uh, basis uh, of uh, uh, information uh, on the irrigation water requirement and results is mostly it is either over irrigation or under irrigation and loss in productivity, loss in uh, water productivity as well. Okay, So therefore it is necessary to relook into the current practices and devise the practice which is more accurate, uh, more friendly and at the same time more adaptable to the farmers. So, what is the solution? Solution is the real-time irrigation scheduling. Okay. Now, the difference between the irrigation scheduling based on the average values and based on the real-time values is that the real-time values provides the precision actually. Okay. As I have already told, uh, average situation, maybe it is over the time period or maybe it is uh, over the uh, regions these averages never match to the specific condition. Okay, If we consider uh, the temporal averages, that is averages over the time period, okay, then that situation never happens in reality. In reality, we have to provide the irrigations considering the real-time weather parameters, not the average weather parameters. Similarly, at the farmer level, farmer has to irrigate his or her crop at his form or her form and if we consider the averages of the particular region then those regional averages will be different than the actual condition at the farm level okay in actual uh, and 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 irrigations are to be provided as per the actual condition what is the actual crop soil uh, crop type uh, when it has been grown, when it has been sown, uh, what is its length uh, period, uh, crop growth period, what is the type of the soil at that particular farm. You know that the soil type varies greatly actually within farm itself. So over the region that variation is quite great. And at the same time, what are what is the weather conditions uh, based on which farmer is going to uh, provide the irrigation water and that needs to be in a real time and not based on the average condition. Okay, so this is important of uh, importance of real-time irrigation scheduling. All the approaches that we have seen are uh, maybe those uh, have been explained in previous training lectures as well. Those consist of the average of the data, either over the time period or over the space or over both actually, and uh, in real time uh, those situation seldom occurs or I will say never occurs, and therefore. Our irrigation scheduling should be based on real-time conditions, real-time weather, real-time soil, real-time crop parameters and also for the farms specific actually. 
so this is very important then only farmer will be able to know the precise irrigation scheduling precise amount of the water to be applied to his or her farm as per the soil type of the farm as per the crop as per the crop growth stage as per the actual real time online weather conditions okay so if this happens then it will also provide the farmers certain confidence actually because farmers know that this is based on the real time situation okay this is based on the actual data so farmer will also have the confidence in such type of the methodology uh, vis a vis the methodologies or approaches that are uh, based on the average situation okay but as we have seen previously uh, the irrigation scheduling uh, need lot of parameters lot of properties and all those things certain calculations with the farmer is able to do those calculations or not so for that it is uh the duty uh, of the scientists researchers that they should be provided with the tools that they can uh, use easily and they will also have the confidence in those tools okay and with the advent of all those uh, uh, ict technologies mobile applications uh, android applications adoptions of the farmers by uh, for these uh, mobile applications and farmers ability to have and own these all kinds of the applications made it possible to develop the tools uh, that can be used that can be adopted by the farmers very easily so i am going to explain two kinds of the tools uh, one is the mobile applications wherein mobile applications can be adopted by the uh, farmers uh, straight away uh, for his or her farm without any problem and with the help of the information that farmers already know that actually and at the same time web based application so wherein uh, if uh, there are farmers who are not able uh, to own the android applications mobile app and at the same time even if they oh they may not know uh, how to uh, use the information generated from the mobile app uh, to the actual field condition then for that purpose web based applications they are available and web based applications can be used by certain farmers organization uh, krishi vigyan kendra say in india and uh, certain farmers cooperation or group of the farmers or uh, farmers association so they can use the web based application they can register the number of farmers uh, to this web based application and they can uh, input the data of the farmers field crop soil uh, into this web based application and at the same time whatever the output generated in terms of the irrigation scheduling uh, can be sms to them can be disseminated to the farmers so in that way farmers uh, if they are able to uh, own uh, android mobile uh, r uh they can uh, they, they are sufficiently literate and have the understanding of using the mobile app and the output of the mobile app to their field they can use the mobile applications if not uh, then the farmers organization can use the web based application and disseminate the results of the irrigation scheduling to the farmers so i'm going to explain some of the mobile applications and web based application but before that uh, in short we'll see the uh, concept of this Uh, of course the first is now the real time irrigation scheduling mobile application for estimation of the reference et that is fullage uh, now why i didn't uh, uh, directly uh, explaining you the irrigation uh, scheduling uh, uh, mobile app for real time irrigation water management the purpose is that uh, in fact the one parameter that varies greatly uh, and we should not consider the historical average value is the weather parameters on which the reference crop evapotranspiration depend actually okay so normal practice is that to use the reference crop evapotranspiration based on the competition of 30 years average of the weather data but in this case uh, as the reference evapotranspiration is very important parameter in whole irrigation water requirement or irrigation water uh, scheduling so Uh, this needs to be uh, estimated in real time and on online mode uh, uh, and therefore uh, i i will first explain you uh, the mobile application for the online estimation of uh, real time reference evapotranspiration uh, now here online it is in the sense that uh, uh, because if i am irrigating today then i should uh, need the information of the weather data of uh, previous few days 
and then this uh, uh, weather data needs to be accessed, analyzed uh, so quickly that uh, the farmer should get the result today only. Okay, so for that uh, this online estimation uh, in real time is uh, very important. So let us see the full agile mobile application for estimator for the estimation of the reference crop you have transpiration in real time online. Okay. So now here you see that uh, we have seen this formula and also this automatic weather station before as well. Okay. Uh, nowadays what happens? Uh, there is the intensive network of the automatic weather station and at the same time wherever there, there is no automatic weather station, ground uh, uh, weather uh, meteorological observatory, they are also interconnected and all the data which are obtained uh, from the AWS uh, is uh, automatically transferred to certain server and all the data which is available uh, from the ground meteorological observatory also is inputted into the uh, server actually. So in short if there is a region then uh, if there are several hundred automatic weather stations and ground uh, meteorological observatory all the data is connected to the server and uh, this server uh, can analyze all this data and interpolate this data for the specified location. Okay, so for that, uh, the network of the automatic weather station is very important, and uh, uh, and this uh, network, when connected to each other, then uh, uh, then the advisories by weather service providers can be issued uh, uh, online and also location specific. So uh, this particular mobile application, full agile mo uh, mobile application, use the advisories issued by the different weather service providers such as IMD, Indian Meteorological Department for India, uh, then Open Weather and Accio Weather uh, internationally actually. Okay, So, uh, 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 they collect the data, they analyze the data, they interpolate the data and they provide uh, the information on uh, various weather parameters that influence the reference crop of transpiration uh, on uh, uh, latitude and longitude. And then then we can fetch that information and if we fetch that information uh, with the help of uh, uh, certain mobile applications, estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration, uh, then we will know the reference crop evapotranspiration online based on the actual real time situation. So this is possible and full agile mobile application exactly does this. So this we are going to see in its demonstration as well. So. Uh, uh, and uh, I have demonstrated this with the help of the penman monteith method. You can use any method, but penman monteith method for estimation of the reference evapotranspiration is predominantly being used. So here I am demonstrating the online real-time application, uh, online real-time estimation of the reference crop evapotranspiration with the help of penman monteith So penman monteith formula I have given here, uh, though it looks so simple, but there is whole kind of the algorithm and methodology to estimate estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration by penman monteith method. So it needs data such as wind speed, temperature, humidity, uh, then solar radiation, uh, wind speed, all these data, uh, they are to be fetched from the weather service for a particular location and then use this equation to compute the reference crop evapotranspiration of the current day and at the same time uh, using the forecast of next 3-4 days evapotranspiration can also be estimated for next 3-4 days. Okay, So basically what is done actually say this is the full agile mobile app. This mobile app uh, fetches uh, the uh, weather data uh, of the different locations or the desired locations. Uh, on the basis of the latitude and longitude of the and elevation of the locations, then once the weather data uh, which influence the reference crop evapotranspiration is fetched into this mobile application, then this mobile application has the algorithm to estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration uh, for that location. And uh, once that is estimated, then it is stored and then there, there are different provisions uh, to view this data and at the same time, to download and also to, to, to send the data or to disseminate the data by the different means. So this is in short uh, uh, the uh, concept uh, of full agile mobile application for online real-time application, real-time estimation of the reference crop uh, evapotranspiration. Okay. So this is how uh, this full agile uh, mobile app has different utilities. Uh, this is the main uh, frame of this uh, 
fully gel mobile applications. Uh, if you see here, uh, uh, this there are different menus. Say there are eight menus actually. One is the online mode. Means online mode means the data is fetched online and in real time uh, from the different weather service providers. And then this data is analyzed for uh, estimation of the reference of transpiration. Say for example, if say today's date is 10 November and if I want to uh, estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration of today's and maybe of 11 and 12 November, then the weather data which is uh, uh, responsible for estimation of the reference crop evapotranspiration such as temperature, humidity, sunshine hours, wind speed, rainfall, etc. is fetched at that particular location by this mobile app and once these data are fetched, say for 10th, 11th, 12th November, then the reference crop evapotranspiration is estimated for these dates and once these are estimated, then uh, those can be used for further use, say for example for irrigation scheduling and other purposes as well. So this is online mode. Then the next is the offline mode. In offline mode, instead of fetching the data from the weather service providers, uh, if you have your own uh, AWS or if the, the, there is provision of having own meteorological data uh, for computation of the reference crop evapotranspiration by a specified method, then user can input that data into this mobile app and estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration. So user need not to depend on uh, the values and authenticity of the weather service provider, but user can have his or her own values and determine the offline mode. Then ETR by Tehsil wise or Taluka wise. So what we have done for India, uh, uh, if uh, someone is interested in uh, Tehsil wise uh, values of the evapotranspiration online and in real time mode, uh, then these values can be obtained. So there is a provision uh, to scan through state, districts and thesis and then uh, we can obtain uh, the data by the different uh, reference evap uh, evapotranspiration uh, uh, estimation methods uh, and uh, for the current date and for two, three day, uh, through two, three days ahead. So this is also done. So basically there are three modes. One is online mode. So for the desired location, uh, you can find out the values of uh, reference of transpiration uh, 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 by fetching the uh, online values of the concern weather parameters. Offline, you have to give your own values. ETR by Taluka means again online and in real time mode values uh, for the different tests in India. Uh, then at the same time, uh, for the conveniency purpose, uh, if you want to find out the ETR values for a specified location several times, you can save that location, then you can view the reports, there is help as well, and uh, uh, then there is one irrigation water requirement advisory service, so uh, uh, that information about this service is also given. So basically, full agile mobile application enables users to calculate the crop evapotranspiration values by online mode that is by fetching the weather data through service providers when internet connectivity is available and offline mode manual data input of course for this internet uh, connectivity is not required. Then I'm going to show uh, the different utilities here say for example full agile mobile app uh, uh, then there are different tabs actually each and every tab is uh, explained here you will find this information in the notes that uh, I am circulating here. Say so for, for example, first tab is online mode. So online mode is to be used for calculating daily ETR of your place. Uh, and for calculating daily ETR of your place, there is no need to give weather parameters that is temperature, RH, wind velocity, sunshine hours, etc. But this weather data uh, imported from open weather, uh, weather service provider or IMD for India. Uh, and through this method, you can calculate present day and preceding or succeeding three days ETR at any place actually. Then there is offline mode. In offline mode, if you have weather parameters, that is your own weather parameters of your place, then you can calculate daily ETR through uh, offline mode. Then ETR by Taluka. Uh, through this method, you can calculate present day and next three days ETR of any Taluka for India. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, then there is a saved location. You are able to save different locations in this app and you can easily calculate ETR of the saved places. Okay. Uh, then view reports, uh, then calculated ETR of different place can be saved in terms of the report. You can share these saved reports through email, WhatsApp, SMS. 
also the graphs can be drawn from these saved reports okay uh, and uh, etr can be estimated by using the following methods actually one is penman montage method modified penman method hargreaves samani method fao24 pan evaporation method and fao radiation method so of course there are uh, many methods uh, but uh, based on certain consideration this app involves uh, these uh, five methods then uh, these are the several screens of uh, this app the first uh, is of course the uh, the opening menu so this i have already explained then this is uh, the second screen is for uh, etr estimation by online so, so here you see that there is date uh, 24 10 2020 is given here uh, then uh, method is there uh, then uh, then uh, if you want to calculate this at certain location its latitude la is fetched automatically uh, then day of the year is taken as the current year and for that uh, uh, that day and for that latitude uh, uh, the values of uh, wind speed sunshine hours temperature maximum minimum relative maximum relative humidity maximum minimum they are fetched and interpolated for this particular location and etr is estimated here okay third screen shows the uh, different methods by which you can calculate the uh, or estimate the reference crop you have to transpiration and uh, the fourth screen is for the offline method that is uh, in online method uh, all those values uh, they are populated automatically actually uh, because they are fetched but in case of the offline you have to give the values of wind speed sunshine hours temperature max mean relative humidity max mean and then you can calculate the ctr uh, then uh, the first uh, uh, again uh, 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 screenshot uh, on this slide is uh, how to save the location you can save any location so that for this saved location subsequently you can estimate uh, uh, this uh, reference crop you have to transpiration so first two slides show, shows this uh, first two screenshot shows the saved location and then for saved location uh, how the you have to transpiration is to be estimated is shown in uh, third uh, uh, screenshot and fourth screenshot also shows that you see that uh, 24 10 2020 was the current date and for subsequent 25 26 27 date you can estimate the reference crop you have for transpiration okay and this is for taluka wise say for example here you see that this is the state uh, first is the state then from for state there are different districts and for different district there are different thesis so you can select any state any district any thesis and once you select uh, all the values uh, uh, that are responsible for the estimation of the reference crop you have transpiration they are displayed and you have transpiration is computed automatically okay so here the, there is the computation of the taluka wise you have transpiration then uh, you can uh, also save uh, uh, these values say for example for 24 25 26 27 october 2020 the values of etr 3.74 3.86 3.75 4.86 they are saved okay at the same time if you click on any date then you will also get the values of the weather parameters based on which uh, this uh, reference crop you have transpiration were estimated say for example for this uh, uh, the 26 october uh, 3.74 was your transpiration and if you click on this then you will get the background information based on which uh, these values were estimated okay similarly you can save this share this uh, uh, these all these values with others okay and there is a provision to have uh, the graphs actually for the comparison uh, or for knowing the variation of the reference crop you have transpiration values over a period of certain days so this is bar chart this is line chart okay you can share by text message by pdf as well okay so in this way there is all types of the utility uh, and all these types of the utility is important it is it is not just computation of the uh, reference crop you have for transpiration online and in real time mode but also uh, to know its variation to share with the others and to use this information is also useful actually so this is all about uh, uh, this uh, uh, what we call the full agile mobile application and now i am going to show uh, the video of uh, uh, this full agile uh, mobile application for estimation of online uh, 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 reference crop of transpiration in real time mode uh, and uh, maybe there is no sound for this uh, 
video uh, i would like you to concentrate on the different uh, features of uh, this full agile mobile application anyway this full agile mobile application is also available on uh, uh, play store uh, you can just uh, uh, type full agile and you can download this app on your mobile and you can use this app okay but before that uh, i am going to show you the short video and this uh, uh, video as i show you show, show, uh, as i told you is the silent but in between uh, if uh, th there are certain important things uh, I, 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 I will tell you. So this is first screen, online mode. You see on online mode, the values, they were populated, estimated 3.74. Then you can save the location. Say NPKV farm is being the location and your location is saved successfully. Then of course there is a provision of language selection. English is the language and one is Marathi language and again say this is for the 24 October 2020 using Penman Monte method. Similarly, you can calculate for 25th, that is next day, and so on. This is offline actually. In that case, you see that in offline mode, the values, they were not populated automatically, but you have to input your own values. And if you input your own values, uh, then uh, your translation can be estimated by the desired method. Uh, in fact, this, acts, this is a bit of calculator kind of thing. Now it is displaying the Taluka wise in India, of course. Now this is say Maharashtra state, Ahmednagar district, and Rahuri Tehsil. So for this, for 24 October, by using Penman Montage method, the values are shown. So you can use any method. This is the calculation for the saved method. So MPKV form was saved there. So you can just select uh, NPKV form or any saved location. Then you can select the different dates, different methods if you want, and you can calculate the reference crop you have transpiration values. So normally the forecasts they are available for the next three days. So we can estimate the evapotranspiration transpiration values for next three days. You can see the reports as well. Say, for example, for saved location, MPKV form is saved location. So we, we had just calculated the values for four days. So those are being uh, uh, shown here. This is the graph bar chart of the evapotranspiration values of these four days. This is the line chart. Then you can share either in terms of the text message or PDF file. You can also share via WhatsApp, which is the popular feature of sharing. Okay, so this is all about the name of the developers. So just now uh, we, we, we saw the mobile application uh, for the online estimation of the reference crop output transpiration. You see that the beauty of this is that it fetches uh, uh, the values in the real time mode. That is the current day value, which is the actual and also for the desired location uh, latitude longitude wise. So for that location, uh, you will uh, come to know what are the values of the weather parameters and reference copy of transpiration. So this can be considered as the most accurate amongst all the methods which are available uh, currently actually. Uh, and these are available online as well. Means uh, online uh, is having the importance because we can use these values for the irrigation scheduling quickly. So which I'm going to explain uh, to you with the help of another applications uh, for the irrigation scheduling later on this lecture.
Okay. Uh, now, as I told you that the mobile application can be used for individual farmers or by the individual farmers, but when the individual farmer is not able to use and if there is certain service by the group of the farmers or farmers organization then instead of mobile application web-based application is useful because because in case of the web-based application the concerned service provider can uh, store uh, the information about the several locations several farmers and uh, they can disseminate that information in one go and therefore uh, i would like to demonstrate the application of the web-based uh, estimation uh, of reference crop evapotranspiration, uh, which is uh, full agile. Uh, so, this web based application is available uh, on the website uh, www.rkvyiwras.ac.in. Anyway, I'm going to demonstrate this application. Uh, and of course, you will have to register, and every time you use, you, you'll have to log into that. and then you can find out virtually uh, the uh, reference crop evapotranspiration uh, online and in real time mode uh, for any location uh, in the world. So this is just one example. Now, now I, am I am going, going to, to demonstrate, demonstrate to you the web-based web -based application, application named, named as Kulejal for, for estimating, estimating the reference crop evapotranspiration. evapotranspiration. Are reference evapotranspiration in real time. Real -time. Uh, this uh, web-based application full is available on the website rkvyiwras.ac.e. So this full web-based application is available. On, on the website, www.rkvyiwras.ac.in. So, so, by accessing this website, the application can be available as shown on the screen. Okay. Okay. So, so, when, so when, when you open this, this website, you will, you will find on main menu, menu uh, different uh, uh, sub-menus, say home, advisory, advisory publication, publication information corner, software. software, then there, there are events about, about us and contact, contact us. us. So, so in, in case, case of the software, software uh, there, there are three submits, Android apps, desktop top application, and web-based application. And on, on this web-based web application, there are, there are two web-based web -based applications available. One is, one is full agent. This, this is for estimating the reference graph of a transformation in real time mode. And, and another, another is Pulley Education Scheduler. This, this Pulley Education Scheduler, we shall, we shall see a letter on this presentation. But, but this is the Pulley Agile, so you, so you click, click on Pulley Agile. Okay. So, so once you click on Pulley Agile, then, then on screen, screen the, the dashboard, dashboard of the Pulley Agile will, will appear, appear and, and you see that, that you have been asked the login details of this Pulley Agile. So, so if, if you have already registered, then your login details are with you. But, but if you are, you are not registered, registered then, then first you have to register by, by clicking on, on the button register. register. Okay. So, so in this case, in the registration form, you will be asked some, some simple, simple details such as, such as your, your first, first name, last name, last name mobile, mobile number which is used as login, as login name, password, password confirm password, password, and email, email ID which is optional. Okay. So, so once you provide all these details, and then, so, so if you click on the button register, your, your login name, name and password, password will, will be uh, uh, registered. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, then, then you can, can use those, those login, login details for accessing, accessing this full uh, web-based application. So, so for, for that, that you have to give your, your username. username. So, so I am giving my username as and, and also, also password. password. And, and you, you can, can just log, log into that. that. So, so screen, screen will appear, appear and if you, if you see here, uh, the choices, choices of two languages, languages are given. One is local language, language Marathi and another is English. So you can, can click, click on English, English and, and then, then uh, you, you uh, uh, see that, that there, there is one, one menu, menu, menu on menu, menu bar, home, register location, location calculate ETR, ETR, ETR by Taluka and report. report. Okay. In, In case, case of register location, so, so if you, if you already registered, registered location, location, this is fine. 
if, 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 if not, not you, can you can register, register uh, uh, some, some uh, location, location here, here. Okay. Okay. say for, for example uh, uh, i am registering the location, location called hedra okay. okay and, and once, once you type here hedrabad then, then the, the latitude, latitude in terms, terms of, of uh, uh, degree minutes and second, second. Uh, 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 will appear, appear on, on the screen, screen along with the elevation, elevation of the place because these details are required for estimating, for estimating the reference from your transportation. You can, you can save, save this location. location. Okay. Okay. So, so you, you get, get the message uh, location saved successfully. And, and then, then if you, you want, want to calculate uh, the ETR uh, uh, online uh, for, for this Hyderabad location or for all previously saved locations, then you have, you have to access, access uh, to the, the menu, calculate, calculate ETR, then, then there is online, online mode, offline mode, offline mode registered location, quick ETR. ETR. So, so in case, case of online, online mode, so uh, you, 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 you will get, get the uh, details of the ETR, ETR online, online uh, for, for the uh, location, location from, from which, which you are accessing this website. website. In, case in case of, of the offline mode, you have to provide your own data. data. In case, in case of, of registered, uh, registered location, you will, you will get the ETR values online. For, for the registered location, location. and, and in, in case of quick ETR, ETR you, will you will get the ETR, ETR that, that is reference property of translation values of all the registered locations. Location. Say, Say for example now, so, so I am going, going to this menu registered, registered location. location. Okay. So, so in this, this case, case, you see, you are, you are going, going to see here Ahmednagar, and, and there are previously saved some locations are there. Say Ahmednagar, Kanpur, again Ahmednagar, one Pune, Bhopal, Hyderabad. So, so I, have, I, have I have just registered, registered this Hyderabad location and, and say today's, today's date is 9, is nine and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and you, you can, can get uh, the reference from your translation for, for next, next three days, days as well. I show here, here 9, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11 12, 11, 13. 13. Okay. And, and uh, you, you can, can get the estimate of reference from your translation by 5 minutes. One is payment voltage which is popularly used or mostly used then there is Harvey Samani. Modified, modified payment, prescribed Taylor method, and a few okay. okay. So, so if, if you are accessing uh, this website on 9, so, so you get, get the day of the year 9-11-2-0-2-0 uh, uh, is 3-1-4th day. day. Okay. Okay. Then, then on, on that, that particular day, day so, so you get the data, sunshine hours, wind speed, what, what is maximum temperature, minimum temperature, maximum relative humidity, minimum relative humidity. ETR, ETR value, which, which is 5.76 mm per day, and, and you can, can save this calculated ETR. Okay. Okay. So, in so this way, this ETR is saved. Is saved. Then, then, if you, if you want, want to find, find out in an offline mode, offline mode means in online, online mode, what is happening? happening? You, are you are getting the data, the data online, online. Uh, uh, and for, for this purpose, purpose uh, the, the Weather, weather service, service is accessed, access, and, and this weather service is open weather, weather service. Okay. okay. And, and if you want, want to, uh, if you want, want to uh, calculate in offline, offline mode, mode. Okay. okay. So, so in offline mode, mode uh, you, you, you have, have to give your, your own data. data. Say, say, for, for example, example uh, I'm calculating this again for Hyderabad uh, region, and I am using Pinman Mountain method as shown here. Or maybe for the purpose of demonstration, let us use another method. Or use some other. Okay. And, and in this, this case, case, you can give the data, data as file input, input and or you can give the data, data as menu, menu input. input. So, so I will show, show here menu, menu input. input. So, so in case, case of menu input, input so, so you can, can give the number of entries here. So, so one, two, three, four, whatever it may be. And then, then you can give the day, day of the year, see if I get day of the year as C14. Then say maximum temperature I give here as 41. Uh, minimum, minimum temperature, temperature I give here, here as say 29. Okay. okay. And, and then, then, uh, 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 then cal cal calculated at uh, uh, so 70 TR. So, so it is calculated, calculated as 5.32 mm. Okay. okay. And, and each method uses a certain constant as well. And, and if you want to update these constants, then it uh, you, can you can always update, update all, all these constants. constants. There is a so provision to update the constants. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, the default, default constants can be taken without, without any problem. problem. So, so this is offline. And, and uh, uh, if you want to calculate the ETR for all the locations together, then you can go for quick ETR and, uh, and, uh, and, and you see calculating ETR for all the locations. So ETR is calculated for all the locations that sell successfully. 
and you can, you can see all these ETR, ETR okay, in, in a report, report section. section okay. Okay. In, in say in report section, section then, then again there are offline and, and on saved location. location. So if, so if you go for, for saved location, location report, report uh, and say for, for we have just calculated, calculated for Hyderabad, so it is for Hyderabad. So, so you get the values, values of 9, 9 10, 10, 11, 12, 12 30 uh, for Hyderabad. Uh, these, these are the ETR values, values okay? and you, you get all, all the details, details as well. Okay? Okay? So, so say for example for 9th November, November. So, so it, it is the day of year, so what was wind speed, speed, maximum temperature, minimum temperature, temperature maximum relative humidity, minimum relative humidity, sunshine hours and what was ETR. Okay. Okay. So, so you, you can, can and, and it gives also the average value of the ETR. So in this case you can now go for another location. Instead, instead of Hyderabad, so, so if you, you go for say Bhopal, Bhopal. Okay. Okay. so, so you will get the values of Bhopal, Bhopal because that was also the location, location saved. saved. Okay. Okay. And, and then you can save, save this in Excel if you want. Okay. Okay. So, so, the, the, so, so this, this data is saved, saved in Excel and then uh, this, this data will, will be uh, used for any other purpose if you want. So in this way the report is also generated. And there is one more utility. Uh, also in real time. time. Uh, uh, so, so if you, you uh, click on this ETR by Aluka, okay, and, and then, uh, uh, then, then then you can give uh, 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 say uh, name of any state, state here. You can select, select any state. state say for example in Karnataka. In Karnataka, if you select the Bagalkot district and Badabi Taluka, and then for this you will get get the values of what we call as the evapor transpiration. By, by different methods, this is the payment one for the different dates, say 8. eight. Uh, uh, in this, this case, case, all these values are shown. And, and say, say instead, instead of 8, I, 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 I want to calculate for 9, nine. So, so this value is given for 10, for 10 and, and similarly for 11, 11 so the values, values are given. And, and similarly, for, you can get, get the values for the different methods as well. So, so in this way, way you get the estimates of uh, 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 Vyapun transpiration taluka wise on online as well. Okay. Okay. So, so thus in this case, uh, if you want to access to the web based application for estimating the reference from Vyapun transpiration, transpiration, you can, can always access to uh, this uh, full angel uh, web based application with, with the help of which uh, you get, get the, the real time, time values of uh, the Vyapun transpiration, which will be useful, useful for, for uh, 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 the irrigation scheduling as well. And, and once, once you are done, done with this, this then you can, you can also log out from, from this. this. Okay. Okay. So we had uh, just seen uh, the web-based application for estimating the reference crop evapotranspiration online and real-time mode. I also told you before that the mobile application and when to be used mobile application and when to be used the web-based application. Uh, I also told you uh, uh, the circumstances under which this mobile app are web-based applications are to be used. And though I had to tell you the, all these things hurriedly, but uh, th this is just to give you the uh, exposure, certain understanding about that. And uh, you can always uh, uh, go to the website uh, to access uh, the web-based application and go to the Play Store uh, to download the mobile application. Uh, there is one more thing now uh, regarding the uh, real-time uh, estimation of the reference crop of evapotranspiration uh, on the uh, map actually. It is just like Google uh, kind of the map. Okay, uh, so uh, in this case, you will be given, uh, uh, you can access the map actually, and, and, and this is all over world actually. So you can access any point on the map and find out the reference crop evapotranspiration of today, concerned weather parameters, and also the reference crop evapotranspiration of uh, uh, next three, four days, just like the mobile application and web based application. But this information is obtained in real time on the map. Uh, so that you can compare uh, quickly uh, the re reference copy of transpirations of the uh, different uh, location. Okay, so uh, just to calculate the spatial reference you have a transpiration uh, to estimate what requirement of the crop by entering the name of the location or just click on the location on the Google map. 
So in this case, you can click any location on the Google map and you'll know the uh, re reference graph you have for transpiration value of the current day immediately. Or you can type any location in the Google map, uh, the cursor will go to that location and uh, uh, and you will be known uh, the value of the uh, reference graph you have for transpiration in uh, uh, real time mode. So uh, I, I would like to uh, demonstrate you uh, this application as well. Uh, just, uh, just now, now I, I demonstrated, demonstrated uh, the, uh, the web base, base uh, application, application for estimating the reference of the translation online, online and in, and in real, real, real time mode. Okay. Now there is now one there is more, more application, application uh, wherein uh, uh, you, you will get the values of, of uh, uh, reference, reference crop evaporation translation by Penman-Monte Penman method, method uh, for, for the current day and, and the forecast for next, next uh, three, three to four, to four days. days. And this and is also, this is also online, online and, and in real time mode. mode. But, but this, this is the special, special estimation of the reference crop evaporation translation online, online and in real time mode. Uh, this uh, means this that, that uh, 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 you can you access, can access to, the to the map and, and uh, uh, you, 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 you drag, drag your cursor on any on location, any location uh, on, the map, on the map and, and you will get, you will the, get the, uh, 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 the climatic values, values uh, of, that of that location, location. Uh, and at the and same at the time, time uh, you, uh, you will also get uh, uh, the, the uh, reference crop you have for transpiration by Penman Monte method. Or alternatively, or alternatively you, can, you can give the, give the name of, name of location, location and for that location, location uh, you, will uh, you will get the, the uh, values of all the concerned with the parameters. And, and at the same, at the same time, time uh, you will uh, get the estimates of the reference crop you have for transpiration by Penman Monte method. So far, so far that, that you have to you access, access the website, the website mpkv dash c a a s t dot c c dot in as shown above, above. And, and in main menu, main menu if you see there is, there is uh, just, uh, just below the main menu, menu. Uh, there is uh, one, there is one menu more menu and at the end, end. So, there so there is spatial ETR. if you click, you click on that spatial ETR. You see, you the, see map. the map here. Spatial, Spatial ETR estimation. estimation. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, uh, the, current the current location, location on, the on the map is Rahuri, Rahuri here. here. And for and Rahuri, Rahuri uh, the values, the values of, of the conserved weather parameters, parameters. That is minimum, minimum temperature, temperature, maximum maximum temperature, temperature, minimum minimum relative humidity, humidity, maximum relative humidity, humidity, rainfall, rainfall wind, speed, wind speed, sunshine, sunshine hours, and, and uh, 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 the current day of the current, current day, that is C13. And, and for this, for this the, value the value of uh, reference, uh, reference uh, uh, crop you have for transmission is shown. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, if, uh, if, you, if you go, if still, you go still, still below, below then, then you will, you will see that, see that you, 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 got you got the values of, of current, current date, date 8, 8, 9, 9, 9 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12 and 30. 30. Okay, so in okay, so this way, way, you get the value, get the value of current day and at the same time, time the values, the values of, of next 3-4 days are here. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, now if now you come, if you come to, to uh, 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 this, this uh, map, map again, again. Now, instead, now, instead of, of uh, this Rahuri, uh, if, uh, you, if, you, if you want, if you want uh, all these values of other locations, say nearby locations, say Sri Rahuri here. So, so you see you that, see that uh, if, you, if you drag, you drag the, cursor the cursor to the, the Sri Rampur, then, then uh, you, will you will get the values of, values of uh, Sri Rampur location, location as shown here. Show here. Similarly, Similarly uh, you, you, you can go still further, further and, and you, 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 see you see that, that say, say, here there, here is, there is one location, location Chaliska, and, and then you will get, get the values of Chaliska. In this way, you will get the values of the desired location of the map. And these, and values, these values they are in, they are in real, real time, time for the current, for the current day, day and for, and for next, next three, four, four days, days ahead. ahead. Okay. Okay. And here, and here say, say uh, the, 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 there, there is one uh, provision, provision for, for giving the, the name of a particular, particular location, location as well. For, for example, if you give the, give the location, location name as Gopal, Gopal. so you can so locate, you can this, locate Gopal. this Gopal and, and you will get, you will get the uh, values, values of, of uh, all the concerned weather parameters, parameters for Bhopal, for Bhopal uh, uh, along, along with uh, its reference, its reference copy, of copy of the translation of the current, of the current day and, for, and, for, uh, and, and of the 3-4 three, four, three, four next, next day ahead. In fact. In fact. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, in, the uh, in the same way, way so, if, so you can, if you move your cursor to some other location, say maybe desired location, 
and say and this, say this is a question guna guna for example and, and then here, here you will get, you will get the, the values, values of guna guna okay. Okay. so in so this, in this way, way you can, you can use, use this, this special, special ETR estimation, estimation tool, tool. I, have i have shown you this, you this as the web based web based this web based, web -based estimation tool, tool. Oh, far, far obtain the, the values, values of the weather, weather parameters, parameters at any location, any location and with, and the, with the help of these weather parameter values, values uh, the estimates of the reference, reference copy of the translation, they are obtained for, the, for current the current day and next three, four, four days. days. And this, and is, this again is again online, online mode and, and in, in uh, real, real time. time. Okay. So this so is all about, all about the web-based web -based application of special ETR. And this application is also available on Mobile. mobile so you so can, access can access either to either web -based web -based application or, or mobile, mobile application. application. Uh, we have seen uh, the real time estimation of uh, reference crop evapotranspiration, uh, which is one of the important parameter required for the computation of the evapotranspiration of crop and subsequently water requirement and irrigation requirement okay but then uh, when we say that we can calculate water requirement and irrigation requirement uh, online uh, and in real time mode by using the estimates of the reference crop you have to transpiration uh, online and in real time mode then there is one more application uh, which tells us or which provides us the information based on this online estimation of reference crop you have to transpiration based on the farm details in terms of the soils in terms of the size based on the crop details in terms of the type in, in terms of the crop growth stage based on the irrigation system details type of the system geometry of the system and at the same time efficiency of the system uh, it is possible uh, to uh, estimate uh, uh, the irrigation water requirement and to deliver that irrigation water requirement uh, to the farm uh, the time for which the pump should be operated okay basically farmers uh, want to know only two things uh, water to be applied to the farm uh, depending on the actual weather situation depending on the actual crop situation depending on the actual soil type de depending on the irrigation system he or she is using and also the time for which the pump should be operated and that also in real time and online so for that of course the important engine was to estimate the reference crop evapotranspiration in real time and online mode and if other information can also be provided to the uh, 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 system and uh, based on that other information and real time estimation of the evapotranspiration uh, by involving certain kind of the simulation model uh, it is possible uh, to estimate uh, the amount of water to be applied in real time online and also the pump uh, the time for which the pump needs to be operated uh, in real time and online uh, one such uh, a mobile based application is the fully full irrigation scheduler uh, i will uh, describe uh, this full irrigation scheduler application and also then later on uh, demonstrate uh, this is mobile application and this will be followed by the web based application uh, you see this is the full irrigation scheduler uh, mobile app uh, the main purpose of this app is uh, uh, to uh, enable the farmer to register uh, their farms Uh, for the farm details such as its location such as its size uh, for the soil in terms of the soil type uh, then for the crops in terms of the type of the crop in terms of the uh, uh, its crop characteristics uh, then irrigation system details uh, so the farmers uh, this mobile app enable farmers to register the farms for all these details and once the farm is registered then farmer can decide the irrigation interval based on the soil type by uh, using the concept that uh, i explained in the beginning of this lecture and uh, for this irrigation interval then amount of water to be applied uh, and the time for which the pump is to be operated to deliver the uh, estimated amount of water to be applied uh, all these they are calculated and uh, provided to the farmers so for that uh, there are different menus and which are shown uh, on the screen so first is uh, the farm register the farm registration so in this case the farmers need to register farm by giving the information about soil crop irrigation method etc then 
you can view this information as well so if you are more than one form so you can register all the forms and you can view the information regarding form details soil crop irrigation methods of all the registered forms okay then uh, 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 suppose in the middle of the season if you want to edit or any type you, if any time if you want to edit the form details you can also edit all these form details okay and then as i told you uh, uh, before uh, the water requirement or irrigation water requirement needs the evapotranspiration estimation for which the reference crop evapotranspiration is needed then this reference crop evapotranspiration is estimated uh, on daily basis by using uh, penman monteith uh, method uh, for all the registered forms and based on which with the help of simulation model which is inbuilt in the uh, mobile app the irrigation water to be applied and time for which the pump is to be operated are estimated and for this purpose you need to provide uh, uh, the uh, uh, previous date of irrigation and next date of irrigation and of course you can save all these information uh, for your record purpose because the farmer needs to know uh, uh, how much amount of the water he or she has already applied to the farms and when so that all kind of the information uh, can be stored in this case and uh, because as it's used certain kind of the simulation model it needs certain data as well so all kinds of the default data they are input into into the model but if the user wants to change this default data they can change without any problem so that provision is also made here so let us demonstrate this with one example again this uh, uh, mobile application is available in app store with the name pis full irrigation scheduler the first screenshot is just showing uh, uh, the logo of this pis the second when you click that logo on the screen uh, the second screenshot uh, will appear and in that in the third all the different menus that is form registration uh, region, view form edit form then daily access advanced and quick irrigation event irrigation report etr report and other information they are displayed then in case of the form register uh, if you see the first screenshot then in that case you have to give form name so once you give form name uh, then uh, you you have to take uh, this mobile app uh, uh, to the form at least once actually because uh, you need to register latitude uh, uh, and elevation of uh, that uh, form as well so if you don't know latitude and elevation then you have to take your mobile uh, to the location where form exists and these values uh, will be uh, populated automatically uh, if you don't want to take your mobile to the form then you should know all these values by uh, different means or other means and then you have to input yourself and then you have to give the form size uh, what is its length and what is its width of course it doesn't matter actually if the forms may be of the regular size but it really doesn't matter as you will know uh, later okay uh, and based on this the area is calculated okay so this is uh, uh, all about the form registration uh, of course uh, here the area is 100 by 100 then you can change this area uh, or you can edit naturally so this is shown in the second screenshot the third is giving the information of the soil okay so for example i have given in as shown in the second screenshot the name of the form as the sugarcane form okay then uh, in case of the soil information uh, this now uh, sugarcane form appeared and you can select any one of the soil type okay and uh, so from the very light uh, light medium and heavy and corresponding properties soil properties they are already provided into this mobile app but if you want to change those then you can click on the advanced button and then the drainout period and water holding capacity of the soil uh, can be edited if you need Okay. similarly you have to input the crop information so for that again you have to access uh, to your form named as the, the sugarcane form uh, you can give of course any name to the form uh, as uh, uh, i am going to demonstrate to you uh, the application of this mobile app for the sugarcane form i have given uh, name as the sugarcane form you can register as many form as you want and but you need to register you need to access to the uh, desired form uh, when estimating the irrigation water requirement then uh, after the form name there is crop type uh, predominantly crops have been classified into two for this purpose one is row crop and another is the orchard plantation sugarcane being the row crop you have to select the 
row crop and once you select the row crop then uh, there is a list of more than 30 crops and sugarcane is there so you have to select the sugarcane and then this crop period will uh, here uh, appear automatically if you want to change this crop period you can change then data planting you have to give here and at the same time uh, you you have to give uh, the row to row spacing and plant to plant spacing okay so this row to row spacing and plant to plant spacing uh, and this data planting will appear automatically depending on the season but you can change as per your requirement okay then uh, just like in case of the soil soil water holding capacity and drain out period where uh, the parameters uh, that are required for irrigation scheduling uh, in case of crop information we need the crop coefficient so this crop coefficient uh, for all crops they are provided in this mobile app uh, either uh, with the help of uh, FAO documented values or with the help of locally developed values but if you want to change this crop coefficient value there is advanced KC button you can press on this button and you will be able to change the crop coefficient values which are input into this mobile app as default values then there is irrigation information again sugarcane form then there are three methods by which you can schedule the irrigations one is surface drip and sprinkler okay so you have to select one of these say for example you have selected drip and once you select the drip then immediately uh, uh, the parameters are characteristic concerned with the drip you have to input uh, here there is uh, one as i told you already weighted area factor you have to give because you are using drip irrigation so weighted area factor will be asked so for sugarcane it is uh, 0.8 it uh, will appear automatically but if you want to change you can change then if you are using any other water conservation practices you can give that because uh, you can use the mulch uh, coupled with that and mulch will save water uh, so you can select this and here no mulch has been taken so water conservation factor is zero if you select mulch then corresponding water conservation factor will appear so in the same way you can use this app for the irrigation scheduling of the crops in uh, greenhouses polyhouses or uh, shed net houses uh, then as this is the uh, drip method there is lateral geometry you have to give uh, means whether it, it is the uh, single row lateral or paired row lateral that you have to give uh, in case of the row crop uh, you know that we can use one lateral per row of the crop or one lateral for two rows of the crop or one lateral for four rows of the crop and whenever you select the orchard plantation it is a bit different in that case you have to use one lateral per row of crop or two laterals uh, per row of crop so accordingly if you select uh, row crop or orchard plantation the option will appear okay so once you select uh, uh, the lateral geometry uh, uh, then the emitter spacing and uh, uh, this lateral spacing will appear automatically lateral spacing will appear based on uh, uh, the lateral geometry and also the crop geometry in terms of the row spacing and emitter spacing will appear based on the soil type but if you want to change you can change this and emission uni uniformity will appear so as 90 percent by default but you can change and at the same time uh, emitter discharge will appear by default but uh, you can give your own uh, emitter discharge which normally you know so uh, in this way you have to give the information that normally farmer knows actually so it is it is nothing hard other information is derived from uh, the literature and other uh, sources and they are kept in a default mode but if you want to change you can always change so you continue and your form is saved actually so in this way your form is saved and then uh, once your form is saved you can view the details and you can edit as well but when you want to use actually uh, then uh, once the form is registered then you have to give the irrigation actually so for giving the irrigation you have to access uh, uh, to the uh, evapotranspiration engine of this app so it is in two ways daily access advanced and daily access quick so in case of the daily access advanced uh, you can select the method of your choice okay and in case of the daily access quick uh, the method is selected by default as the penman monte method so if you want don't want to use that method you use the advanced version or advanced tab and use the method any uh, the way with uh, the one you want and then in that case uh, the current date and the next three four dates data uh, uh, of the weather will be generated and your transpiration will be estimated in daily access mode uh, what will happen if there are number of forms then for all the forms together for the current date and for next three four dates the evapotranspiration will be estimated in real time mode uh, for the current day and next day and this evapotranspiration will be saved for all the locations 
Then in case of the irrigation event, if you have given uh, the previous irrigation on 25th, say for example here July, and if this is and this, this being the medium soil, so you can give alternate irrigation. So next date of the irrigation you can put 27 July. And uh, so this date is 25 uh, 5th July uh, previous irrigation. So as the soil type is medium, so you can give uh, you can you can irrigate uh, alternate day and 27 is your next date. And then you just calculate and here you will see that uh, the time of application uh, and all other details they, 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 they are appeared actually. Okay, so uh, what is the amount of water to be applied, system discharge, and time for which uh, the pump is to be operated? All those details are appeared in these two sc uh, screens. Okay, so in this way, uh, I tried to uh, explain uh, you, and I will now uh, I will demonstrate you uh, the application of uh, Fule irrigation uh, scheduler mobile app. Uh, for the real-time irrigation scheduling of uh, different crops. Uh, I have already briefed uh, about uh, this application, but uh, uh, I am going to demonstrate you uh, this application, one for row crop and uh, uh, another for the orchard plantation. Of course, uh, this is again self-explanatory, uh, but whenever uh, I would like, uh, uh, I will tell you about the important feature. Otherwise, uh, this uh, video is silent and you, you, you can uh, in fact know different features and of course this is also available in uh, App Store so uh, you, you can uh, access to App Store to download this. So this is the form is being registered. The mobile has been carried to the respective location uh, so its latitude and elevation uh, have been uh, automatically populated. The dimensions of the form in terms of length and width is being changed and then total area will be calculated automatically. Save this. Then for sugarcane form, no form, form name appeared, medium soil. Then you have to give crop, sugarcane being row crop, row crop has been chosen. Then there are three seasons of the sugarcane, so Suru sugarcane is chosen. So other details appeared automatically, but we can change this. Say for example, row to row spacing instead of four feet, the five feet is being in given, 150 centimeter. Then select the type of the system, say drip system. Then mulching is not used, so no mulch, water conservation factor will be zero. Single row lateral as it is on 5 feet, the meter spacing is changed, it is not as given in default. Then there are number of forms, then sugar can form details is being viewed, form information, soil information, crop information, irrigation information, as I already told, cases can be changed if you want. Similarly, you can edit the information, say sugar can form information if you want to edit, that can be edited. <clears throat> so now, you have to access to the ET data that is evapotranspiration, select the form, advanced version is being chosen. So you have to estimate the evapotranspiration in real time mode by using any one method. So Penman Montage method is chosen. So all these evapotranspiration and weather data will be stored in the app. Alternatively, if you do daily access, then these ETR values by Penman Montage method will be calculated and saved for all the locations. Say the previous date of irrigation is 25th July, and as the soil being the medium, the so next date is chosen as 27 July. 
and water to be applied 3.26 per uh, liter per emitter system discharge is 7.47 lph 57 is the time of operation 57 minute so you can view the irrigation report for this form sugarcane form and you can also see uh, the different details uh, on the day of irrigation you can see the ETR report as well so 25, 26, 27, 28 <clears throat> so in this way you can uh, use uh, this uh, mobile application and you can also share this information with others okay or if someone is using mobile app for your form so he or she can share this information for uh, your form so which you can utilize so this was all about the application of uh, uh, the fully irrigation scheduler mobile app uh, for the row crop similarly i will demonstrate you uh, this for the orchard now i shall demonstrate uh, fully irrigation scheduler mobile application uh, for irrigation scheduling online and in real time mode uh, for the orchard plantation okay so uh, most of the features are same it is the same application uh, only uh, for selecting the crop uh, uh, the things are a bit different uh, instead of row crop you will have to select the orchard plantation uh, let us see this video again as I told you this is silent video There is one additional feature of Bahar, stress period. This is all about for the orchard plantation. Now let us shift to the web based application. Uh, just like in case of the estimation of the reference crop, you have to transpiration. I uh, explain you first the mobile app and then web based application. Similarly, I explained and demonstrated you the mobile application for real time irrigation scheduling. Uh, and uh, let us see now this web-based application uh, so these are the different screenshots of the web-based application uh, but basically for this you'll have to access to the website www.rkvyiwrs.ac.in and uh, this uh, website will operate mostly as the mobile application was operated but uh, the, again the difference is that uh, the farmers those who don't have Android mobile app or those who cannot use that then the group of farmers or any advisory group can use uh, the web-based application for the hundreds of the farmers by registering their forms on this web-based application. Now let us see its demonstration. Now, now let us, let us see, see how to, how to perform, perform the real-time real -time irrigation scheduling by, by pre-irrigation using, using the, the web-based web application, application named as, as fully irrigation, irrigation scheduler. scheduler. The fully full irrigation, irrigation scheduler, scheduler web-based web -based application, application for, for real-time real -time irrigation scheduling, scheduling by, by pre-irrigation can, can be obtained by accessing the, the website www.rkvyiwrs.ac.in as shown on the screen. screen. 
I have, I have already, already explained, explained the different, the different menus, menus of this, of this website. website. If you come, come to the to main, the main bar, bar, main menu, menu bar, bar of this website, website then you find home, home advisory, advisory publication, publication information, information corner, corner software, software, and, and other three, other three menus, menus as well. But if but you click, click on, on software, software, then there, then are, there are three more menus, menus, sub menus, Android, Android app, desktop, desktop application, and, and web, web application. application. There are there two, two in web, web application. One is full agile, agile and another, and another is full agile 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 agile. I have, I have already, already explained, explained full agile, agile, agile web application. Now, now click, click on full agile 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 which is the application, application to be used, used for, for real-time real application schedule. scheduling. Now, now you see, you see the, dashboard the dashboard of full agile 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 Two options, two options log, in log in and register. register. You, need you need to register, to register to this by, by using the same, same procedure, procedure which I explained explain for, for registering, registering the, the full agile web application, web application for, for estimating the, the reference of your translation, translation in real time. time. So, so let us let consider, us consider that, that you, you are registered, registered then, then to use, to use this web application, application for Real-time real -time irrigation scheduling, you, you have to, to log, log in, that is, that you, is have you have to provide your login, login details. details. So here, so here I am providing these login, login details. details. Then, then password. password. So, so after, after providing this, this login, login detail, detail, the screen, the screen appears, appears where you will you find, find that, that there, there are two forms, forms which are, which are already, already registered. registered. And if, and you, if want you want to add, to add new, form, new form, then, then you, can you can add new form, new form here. here. No, no, the real-time real -time irrigation scheduling, scheduling is to be performed for, for, for the individual form, form okay? Okay? on which, on which the, the crops, crops are grown and which, and which are being irrigated by drip irrigation system. Okay? Okay? So, so uh, uh, let, us let us see the procedure, procedure for adding new, new form. form. Suppose you are, you are using this for the first time, time and you, you don't, you don't have any form registered with, register with this. this. So click, so click on, on the add, the add new, new form. You, 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 need, you need to give, give the, the name, name to this form. form. And, and let us let consider, consider uh, that, uh, that I give a uh, uh, name, name to this form as, say, tomato form. Then, you have, you have to give its location. location. So, so you give, you give certain, certain location, location to this. Say, say for, for example, I give, I give the, location the location that is, that is in Pune. Pune. Okay. okay. And, and then, then it's, it's latitude, latitude in terms, in terms of, of degree minute second, second elevation. elevation. Uh, uh, they will appear, appear uh, automatically. automatically. Then you have, then to, you have to give the dimensions, dimensions of the form. form. Uh, uh, say, say length, width, width and, and total, total area. area. So, so here, the dimensions, the dimensions of the form, the form by default are 100, 100 by 100, 100 meter, 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 that is, that one, is hectare. one hectare. So, so my form, form is not that, that large. large. So say for example, my form, my form is, is only 50, 50 by 50. 50. Okay. okay. So, so in this, in this way, way, I have provided the form, the form details. details. So, this so these form details, details they normally, normally possess the farmer possess. Normally, normally, uh, normally, uh, normally the farmer has all these form details. details. Okay. Okay. So, so you can, you can save, save and continue. And continue. Okay. Okay. So, as so as you see here, here so, so uh, to, uh, to register, register any form, any form so, you so you have to provide the form information, then the soil information for this form, crop information and irrigation information. Okay. Okay. Now, now soil, soil information. information. So, here so here you have, you have to give only four, four types of the soil options are there. So you, so you have to give whether the soil, soil is heavy, heavy medium, medium, light, light or, very or very light. So let, us let us consider the soil, soil is medium. Is medium. So, you so you give the type, the type of, of the soil is medium. Is medium. Then, then below, below you see one option, one option that is advanced. So in so this case, uh, uh, the, the two properties, two properties are needed. One is, what is drain, drain out period and another is water cooling capacity. capacity. Okay. Okay. So, so drain, drain out period and water cooling capacity of, of uh, medium, medium soils okay. okay. uh, 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 have been entered already, already as default, default but you can change. change. Say, for example, I want, I want to change, change the water cooling capacity of, of this soil, soil 
from, from 150, 150 mm per meter to say 140 mm per meter. Mm per so, meter. I so I can change this. I can, I can save, save and continue. So after, so after this, this uh, you will have to input, input the, crop the crop information. Okay. In, in case, case of the crop information, information so, so you have to, have to give, give the crop, crop time. time. Now, now my uh, say, uh, say uh, I want to get uh, in real time tomato. tomato. I have, I have already given the name of the form as tomato, as tomato form, form. but it's nothing, nothing to do with the crop, crop time. time. So, so I can choose as a any crop, but, but say I'm doing, I'm doing it for tomato, tomato. so it is tomato is the row crop. Then, then choose, choose tomato, tomato as the crop. crop. Okay. Okay. Do, let us, let us don't, don't get confused, confused with, with the name of the form with the crop actually. So tomato. And, and by default, default the, the crop period, period of the tomato appeared here. So it is 160 days. days if, you know, if, if it is not 160 days, days in your area, area region, so, so you can, you can edit, edit according, modify, modify according, 150. Okay. okay. Uh, say the, say the date, date of planting. Of planting. Uh, here, uh, here, here by default, default the date of planting is given. But, but my, my tomato says starts, starts in the month of, of say, say November. Okay. So, so I input, input this as. as Say, say November. November. Say it, say it is starts, starts from uh, something, something from say, say first, first November. November. Okay, okay, so, so let, us let us give this as the first, first November. Uh, uh, on medium size, its root to spacing, spacing is 75 centimeter, and, and plant to plant spacing is 30, 30 centimeter. You can change, of course. Okay, so, okay, so this is by default. By default. So, so if 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 you are using your plant to plant spacing as 45 centimeter. So you, so you can give this as the 45 centimeter. Okay. okay. Now, now, as, as uh, we, we already seen, seen uh, 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 crop, uh, crop conditions are very important for, for uh, any, any kind of the irrigation scheduling. scheduling. So, so uh, uh, for real time irrigation scheduling, also crop, crop conditions are required. So, so crop, crop conditions they are already entered here as default, default values. You can, you can check, check these values. values. If you, if you want, you can view these values. Say, for example, now, now for, for one to one, uh, one first, first November, second, second November, and until the crop, the crop period is over, is over the, the crop coefficient values they, they are already, already shown here. here. Okay. But if you are, if, if you have, have the different set of crop coefficient values, you can, you can view those, those values by clicking, by clicking on, on the option, option advanced, advanced crop coefficient. So in, so in, in, in this advanced, advanced crop, crop coefficient, you can, you can enter your, your own crop coefficient value. Well. Say, for example, uh, here, uh, here it is, uh, you, you want to enter your own crop coefficient value. Well. So Say, tomato, they, they are having four growth, growth stages. stages. Okay. Okay. Then you then have, you have to give the duration of each growth, growth stage. stage. Say, first, first is, say, of 20 days, then its crop coefficient is 0.5. So, so that, that you can view here. here. Then, then from, from 21 to say, to say 60 days, days its crop coefficient is say 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.8. Then, then from, from 61 to say, to say 110, it's, it's uh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 it, it, it has given because, because crop coefficient can't be 9.8, so 0. 0.8. 0. 8. For third, third stage, stage, say for example, it is 1.0, and, and then, then say, say for, for the last, the last stage, say, say it is 0. 0. 0.6. So, so in, in this way, you can save, save and continue with this crop coefficient as well. But if you don't, don't want, want that, you can, you can use the use default, default crop coefficient values. So, 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 you, so can, you can. Uh, okay. And. and Next, Next is, is the irrigation, the irrigation information. information. Now, this now this real time irrigation, uh, uh, full irrigation, irrigation scheduler based application, application can be used for the irrigation, irrigation methods, methods, surface, surface brief, and sprinkling. But, but as we are going to see for the brief, so, so let us, let us select, select brief irrigation method, and, and then you then have to give certain parameters of this. Uh, in in irrigation scheduling, as we already seen, we need the area, the area factor. So, so by, by default, it is 0 0.8 here. here. So, so you, you can go with the 0 0.8, 8 or you can change it. If, if there, there are, are any other water conservation, conservation practices, practices that are being, are being followed, say, say such, such as whether, whether mulch, mulch, whether, whether uh, uh, this is a shed net house, poly house, with mulch, without mulch, or no mulch. So you can select that. 
and, and uh, of course, if you, you select any water, any water conservation practice, practice uh, then, then there, there will be corresponding water conservation factor. For no much, there won't be any water conservation factor. Lateral dominance. So if, if you are using, using uh, one, uh, one lateral per row, then, then it is fine, single, single, single row lateral, but many, many times we use the paired row lateral. So let, so let us go for a paired row lateral. Then in, then in that case, as we, as we already given, the, the uh, row, row spacing as 75 cm, then lateral spacing will be 150 cm. Then, then uh, uh, as, as this is the, the uh, light soil, soil uh, medium soil, soil, the, the default diameter spacing is 60 cm, but, but if your system, system is having different spacing, say for example 50 cm, so, so you can, you can, you, you can, you can modify, modify that. that. Okay. Okay. Emission uniformity is 90%, percent, but, but you can, you can put, input, input your own value and, and say meter discharge is 4 LPH, liter per hour. If you are different emitter discharge, you can have that emitter discharge. Finish, finish form, form registration. So, so in, in this case, case your, your form, form has now been registered, registered. And, this and this register form, form has been added in the series as the tomato form. form. Okay. And, and of course, of you, course can you can view form, view form details, you can, you can edit form, form details, details and you can, and you can delete form, form as well. So, so if you want to delete, delete this form, so, so uh, uh, it, it, is, it is asking you as caution again, so I have deleted this form. And, and this, this, this tomato, tomato form, is form is there, so you, so you can do this, do this tomato, tomato form. Say, say form, form information, soil, soil information, crop, crop information, information, irrigation, irrigation information. information. So, so all, all this information, information yeah, uh, you can view and if, and you, if you want to edit, edit of course, of course so you can edit, edit this. For, for example, at some, some stage, stage, if you, if you want, want to edit, edit say, say total, total area. area. So, so it is not 0.2 hectare. So, so if it is say, say little, little less than that, that. So, so you can edit, edit update, update and continue. continue. Okay. okay. So, so in this, in this way, way you, uh, you can input, input the information, the information of, of the form. form. No, after, now after the, the information, information has been, been in after, After the form, the form has, has been registered, uh, now, now uh, you, you need to uh, provide, provide the values of uh, reference copy, copy of transpiration in real time. time. So, so for that, that, that you need not to worry anything. So, so you, you, you just need just need to uh, go to the tab daily access and then there are three options online ETR, offline ETR and quick ETR. So if you click on online ETR, then, then you'll, you'll find, find that, that uh, there is there option of the form, form name, name. So, so you can select form, form name as tomato form. form. Then the, then the method, method. So, so if you want, if you want to uh, use, use pen one more day, you can use pen one more day and the and dates, say the current, current date and, and all, all the, 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 the next three, three four dates will appear, will appear there. And, and of course, of course the form details are there and you find the Different, different weather, weather parameters, values here, wind speed, sunshine, hour, rainfall, maximum, minimum, temperature, relative humidity, maximum, minimum, minimum, and ETR is calculated. You can, you can save, save this calculated ETR. Okay. Okay. And, and you, if, you if you want, want to change, change the method of calculation, you can change. The other is offline ETR. ETR. So, so if you are not compatible with uh, uh, this online, online uh, uh, weather, weather parameter values, values uh, uh, on, uh, on the basis of which the, the uh, real time ETR, ETR has, has been estimated, you can give you your, your own values. Say, for example, uh, for example uh, th 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 these are, uh, uh, these are values. the values. You, you, you can, can uh, give your own savings, spend such an hour's rainfall, maximum minimum temperature, maximum relative humidity, and then you can, you can also, also choose, choose uh, uh, the, the method, method to be adopted, to be adopted from, from two, two which, are which are available when one more is our mark is someone. And, and the next, next another, another is the quick ETR. Quick ETR, quick ETR, quick ETR means, in this, in this case, case say suppose, suppose you, are you are more than one form, one form registered, registered uh, and, and uh, you, 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 don't you don't want to choose any other estimation method, 
uh, uh, then, then if you if select, you select the, the three TTR, TTR you need not do anything, anything actually. Okay. Okay. The, the TTR for the current day and the next, the next three, four, four days will be estimated, estimated for all, all the forms those are registered, are registered uh, uh, by using the payment bond date method. So, so yeah, yeah, I normally, normally advise to go for this discrete TTR. TTR. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, in, this in this way, once you, once you register the form, the form then you need, you need to provide the indication. Uh, uh, after, after the form, the form has, has been registered, so, so uh, uh, you, have you have to, to uh, access uh, uh, the, this, this online, online uh, uh, platform EIS on a daily basis, uh, at, uh, at least by uh, uh, pressing, uh, at least by accessing PGTR. So, so because this enables uh, you, uh, you uh, uh, to uh, store, uh, store the values, uh, uh, estimate the values of PGTR and store the system. Then indication event, which is important. No. no, in this, in this case, case, say, for example, for example uh, uh, my form is, form is tomato, tomato form, form. and, and uh, uh, I, I, I have irrigated, uh, I have to give the previous date of irrigation. The previous date of irrigation is, say, say 9th November, November, and my, and my uh, uh, next, next date of the irrigation, that is the date, the date of, of irrigation. I, I have already given irrigation, say, on 9th November, and this being, being the medium, medium soil. soil. So, so uh, I, uh, I can give the irrigation, irrigation every alternate, alternate day. day. So, instead of giving on 10, 10, 10 I am giving irrigation on 11. 11. Okay. Okay. And, and so, so you have to give the date of irrigation and, and proceed for details. details. Okay. And, and then, then, if you want, if you want to see the details, you can you see. Can see uh, so, so uh, all uh, what, uh, what is the crop condition? Then, then what is, what the, is the reference crop? ETR, ETR rainfall, rainfall, effective, effective rainfall, rainfall, crop what, what is, what is crop the crop ETC, area, area factor, factor, and all, and all these are, are uh, 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 parameters of here, 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 here based on which water requirement, requirement and irrigation requirements, requirements have been, have been estimated. This is, this is for on the, on the individual basis, the individual day basis. So, so for further, further information, you can continue, continue and, then and then you will get the irrigation summary. summary. Okay. Okay. So, what, so what was the total rate plus crop you have for transformation of both the both days, days together? together. So that, so that is 11.31 uh, uh, mm, mm because uh, in this case both the days means uh, your first irrigation was, uh, previous, uh, previous irrigation was given on 9th November and, and you, want you want to give the irrigation on 11th November. November. So, so uh, the, the cumulative, cumulative uh, reference crop year for transpiration of both the both days, days 11.31. Crop year for transpiration is 5.6 mm. Then, then as, as there was, was no rainfall, if you didn't fall zero, total, total water requirement is 4.52 mm. Uh, uh, total, total irrigation requirement is 5.03 mm. Then water, then water to be applied uh, uh, per meter is 3.77. This, this has been estimated, estimated based on the competition. System, system discharge is 2.96 LPS, LPS. That is, that is ab about, about 3 LPS. 3 LPS. Time, time of publication is 56, 56 minutes and 24, 24. seconds. Second, actually. actually. And, and actual, actual date of, date of irrigation, of course, of course is 11 November. November. And you can, and you can input, input here that, that irrigation was performed. Was performed. So in, so in this case, case in, this in this way, you can save the summary and, and you can operate, operate your system for 56, 56 minutes. minutes. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, in this, in this way, way, you can, you can perform, perform the, the real-time real -time irrigation by, by using the full, the full irrigation, irrigation system. system. Okay. Okay. So the so beauty of this concept is that, is that okay. Okay. we don't, we don't have, have to rely, rely on the, on the historical data, data are any, any thumb rule, thumb rule for this purpose, this purpose. But, but you can you access, access the values, the values of, of the weather parameters in real time, real time. Okay. Okay. you have, you have already, already given the values, values of the different, different constant required for soil, for soil crop, crop irrigation, irrigation system. system and normally, and normally these are not to any farmers, farmers. Okay. Okay. so by, so using, by this using this kind of the system, system so you can estimate the time uh, of, of application, application of water, of water or water to be applied in, in real, real time, time and, and online. online. So, so this is all about uh, uh, this uh, web-based uh, full, full irrigation scheduler uh, app, app and of course after use you can, you can log, log out. out. Thus uh, we have seen uh, the real time irrigation scheduling. Uh, and the different mobile applications and web-based applications associated with this. Uh, what we did in this uh, training lecture is that we started with the irrigation scheduling 
then irrigation scheduling is nothing but how to irrigate, when to irrigate, and how much to irrigate. How to irrigate, that is the irrigation methods, and especially the micro irrigation method, and amongst those, the drip irrigation method was covered in one of my previous lectures. And the remaining two things, uh, that is how much to irrigate and when to irrigate. Uh, so I have covered, in fact, the concepts and different terminologies and the procedures for calculating the amount of water to be applied uh, by drip irrigation method and also uh, when this desired amount of water to be applied that is the irrigation frequency that is also for the drip irrigation uh, and then I also told you the current practices okay current practices they are based on the averages and thumb rules and if we bring those into the uh, actual practice uh, which is being done actually uh, the, uh, uh, it, it, it leads to the uh, errors and certain uncertainty and also uh, the farmers confidence will not be there so there because because these are based on the averages not averages of not only of the weather values but other uh, parameters other uh, properties are as well so therefore what needs to be done in fact uh, we we have to get rid of the averages and then we have to consider the uh, real time values actual values uh, real time values of the weathers uh, at the farm level other properties such as soil farm details and crop characteristics at the farm level and then uh, uh, estimate the uh, amount of water to be applied and based on that time for which the pump is to be operated so uh, as this is in the real time so we need uh, uh, the certain means for estimating the uh, real time uh, values and also uh, certain tools uh, uh, to use these real-time values uh, so that the farmer is uh, available uh, with all kinds of the information quickly because uh, he or she cannot delay irrigating the farms if uh, there is delay in uh, the flow of the information. Uh, the mobile applications and web-based applications uh, that I uh, described you uh, enables you or enables the farmers to go for the real-time irrigation scheduling which is nothing but the precise irrigation scheduling which not only will save water it won't waste water but also it will enhance the agricultural productivity and also uh, the water productivity so this is all about the irrigation scheduling in real time those uh, uh, who are interested in this they can access to the concern websites and also uh, they can download uh, the, uh, these apps from the app store they can play with that and also uh, they can uh, disseminate these technologies to the farmers they can experiment with the farmers they can experiment themselves and at the same time it is one uh, teaching and training tools uh, just to know uh, how the irrigation scheduling vary uh, if we change the different parameters uh, so this is one of the uh, best uh, learning tools as well so with this i remain here and thank you very much